What's up, listener? Thank you for pressing play this week on the Jock and Nerd podcast. Marvel releases a new trailer for Spider-Man Far From Home that goes deep into a post-Thanos MCU. Avengers Endgame becomes the fastest movie to make $2 billion. And we get a peek at Disney's movie release schedule through the year 2027 giving us clues into the future of the MCU, Star Wars, and Avatar franchises. Wowie zowie! We've also got a great interview with one of the founders of One List, One Life, a site that's using the Marvel fandom and hype and social media to help kids with cancer. A spoiler review of the fourth episode of the final season of Game of Thrones, listener mailbag, and a whole bunch more, all in this edition of the Jock and Nerd Weekly for Thursday, May 9th, 2019. This is Simon Rex, a.k.a. Dirt Nasty, baby. I like to listen to the Jock and Nerd podcast when I'm driving to work. Wait a minute, I don't have a job. So I like to listen to it when I'm driving to your mama's house. Ha <laughs> ha. You tired of boring podcast shows? These guys at Jock and the Nerd are the funniest, most entertaining nerds on earth. So check it out, baby dick. Check. Check one. All right. This is really fans out there. Let's give it up. We're talking, we it. We're funny, disturbing. We're talking, we heard it. We're spoiler alert. What's up? How's it going? Thanks for joining us this week and every week. And welcome to the Jock and Nerd podcast, where we give you comic book and superhero TV and movie news, reviews, and whatever we choose. Jock and Nerd. My name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the Jock. He's the Nerd. And that felty over there is down two dragons. It's Rug Boy. What's up, Rugs? <laughs> Breaker of cardboard and thread. I was gonna say something related to Spider Man, but oh, now uh, you, can do you it. fucked me up, Imran. Yeah, see, how about that? Keeping you on your toes. Yeah, I was gonna say my spider shits are tingling. Oh, your spider shits are tingling. I used that clip at the beginning of last episode. Oh, you did? Yeah, you gotta go back and listen. Nobody ever goes yeah. back. Yeah, listen to yeah. like yeah. <laughs> pure joy. Uh, thanks for joining us, you guys. We have a lot of stuff to discuss this show. We got news. We got reviews and we got an interview, so I'm not going to waste anybody's time. Let's just whip, whip ourselves over to the news. Let's web swing over there. The Jock Jock and Ned Podcast. Big news for the week. How could I not talk about this? Marvel has released a new trailer for Spider-Man Far From Home, the second Spider-Man movie coming out uh, soon, July. And July. in uh, yeah, July seventh, I believe. Damn. Right. Ooh. So I mean, everyone's still buzzing from Endgame, but a couple of crazy things in this trailer that I really enjoyed. Let's just start with the, the big hubbub, the big discussion. First of all, I've never seen a trailer that has a spoiler message for another movie before playing itself. That's uh, yeah, that's new. Oh, I heard that they didn't put it on some of them. Well, that brings me to my second point. This trailer got a lot of people upset. Oh, shut up. That look, I look, I, I, understandably, I don't get it. Uh, you know, the, uh, the Russo brothers said May 6th, the spoiler embargo is going to be lifted for Avengers Endgame, which I thought was weird. I was like, why are directors being able to dictate? Clearly, it was for this because of this trailer, because it had a lot of post Endgame world in the MCU. But Anthony, is it not possible that maybe you have not gotten around to see an end game yet. And maybe you accidentally stumbled and watched this trailer that did not have the spoiler warning in front. Would that not make you a little bit upset? I mean, certainly it's possible. <laughs> I, I don't know. They, the movie's been out. The movie's made a shit ton of money. Yes. They've, they can assume that a lot of people have seen it. It's been a cultural moment for two weekends now. Absolutely. And of anything that came out from Marvel officially had the spoiler warning on it. So well, it's I like, don't have a lot of sympathy. <laughs> it's like a, a dude who's complaining that you told him who won the Super Bowl the day after. Uh, it, right. Yes, exactly. And I, you know, It's ridiculous. Yes. Everybody saw Everybody who wanted to see the Super Bowl saw it. So fuck you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's going to be people watching it, you know, here on out. But those people are if they don't 
see it the first two weeks, you know, or I think it was actually more than two weeks. They opened it early, right? They opened it a couple days early. So it was like over two weeks yes. out. So those people, if you haven't seen it then, then you're not really a fan enough to get pissed off. And right. if you are, then you you should have gone to the movies. I had this similar situation at work yeah. where I was talking to somebody about Endgame. And then one of my coworkers goes, hey, it was this week. Hey, I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> and I go, Shit. it's been two weeks. What are you doing? Like the the embargo is way lifted. Yeah. Like, this is all your own fault. I wasn't an ass and like spoiled anything, but I was just like, no, like there's you no can't. way you're gonna avoid spoilers yeah. anywhere. Well, look, just to cover our ass right now. <laughs> spoiler alert! All right, put your tweets away, you motherfuckers. Now, let me ask you this: what's a good what's a good rule here? I feel like two weeks for movies, one week for TV shows. Uh, then all, all bets are off. Yeah, I think two That's weeks fair. is. I think two weeks is fine. I think yeah, that if fair. you're really a fan, you're going to see it the first week, either during the week, uh, you know, the, the Monday or Tuesday, Wednesday after. If you if you don't like to be in a crowded theater and you want to see it later, like you'll be able to get tickets, the, the you know, that week. I just think I you can't get upset if it gets spoiled after that. I love your Super Bowl analogy. That's this was almost like a global live event. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's fair to be, you know, one week out. Go, hey, if I want, you know, if you're in a room with people that you like. <laughs> And you you can go oh you know if I'm has anyone everyone here seen Endgame okay cool yeah and we can talk if not all right we'll whisper whatever I know a guy who never goes to the movies because like it's just a pain in the ass like you know he doesn't like to deal with people and all that stuff and he even saw it so it's like <laughs> if, <laughs> if if a guy that I know that never goes to the movies goes to the movies to see Endgame then you know it's like I'm like who's not seeing this that's real fit really a fan and that's the thing is I think those people are in the minority and you just can't whatever like the shit's gonna happen this movie this movie's made so much money everybody and their goddamn grandmothers have yeah. seen it at well, this point we used point. to live in a society was like all right you you, you gotta you know keep up. But right. I think the, uh, the fans were also relatively uh, good at keeping spoilers away for two weeks. Like, I didn't see a lot of people being dicks and spoiling things online. Uh, everything, see, no. everyone was copacetic. Everyone had we're, understanding. We're, we're moving to a, a place where people are being very conscious of being spoiler. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. I don't like to be spoiled but at all. But, like, I know I got to get to the movie, like, the first weekend because I know it's going to happen if I don't. Absolutely. So like yeah. I can only ask people like who haven't seen it before it's it's dropped and been out a week to to not to me not be dicks. But after that I'm like I know at some point shit's going to be on TV. There might be a a, a TV oh, spot. Oh, they're or, showing whole scenes in TV know. spots now yeah. for right. TV yeah. spots were immediately spoiling stuff right yeah. after the weekend. And toys yeah. have spoiled things before the movies even come out. Yes. Yeah. I would also say too on Marvel and I guess Sony's part, you know, this trailer Having seen it, yeah, you know, we'll get into it later. But um, they're trying to parlay off the 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 buzz around Endgame with this trailer, and this is the time to release it. If, you know, if they release this trailer three, four weeks out, the buzz is really gone in terms of Endgame. So they that's a good point. They're trying to you know spin it into another successful film. I'm sure if Kevin Feige had his complete say in this, like that first trailer wouldn't have come out, and this would have been the first trailer. But of course, Sony's like, no, we got we're, this movie's coming out. We gotta let people know. So the compromise I thought worked well. Anthony, now, uh, what what did you think of this second trailer? Now that we're really in post-Endgame MCU, it's five years later. Iron Man is definitely dead. People are remembering him. Uh, and you see him wearing the Iron Spider suit in the beginning in New York. What did you think overall? I mean, there's a lot of things to unpack. The, the first thing that comes to mind is this trailer is basically... the. You're going to like this trailer if you're on board with this universe, yeah, Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. You have to be on board with him. If you're not on board and you're like, it's not my Spider-Man. This is not the guy. You know, There's no Uncle Ben stuff. He's a, he's a worshiping Iron Man. They're talking about him being the next Iron Man. Then this trailer is going to piss you off. So it really comes down to the fact of, are you on board with this version of Spider-Man? That's almost a little blasphemous. But are they really positioning him as the next Iron Man? I, think they... I know. Isn't that insulting to Rhodey? Yes, I, I mean, I think it's just more like you're ever... The black, black dude gets passed over again. It's you like got, fucking fucked up. Shit. Oh, That's shit. Right. Hey, Brody, Brody's <laughs> over in the corner going, hey, what the fuck about me? What am I? Yeah. I just think they're like, look, we need a hero in New York. That Iron Man's not there. Yeah, I mean, we'll see how it plays yeah. out. But they're Tony has a huge part in this guy's Yes, I love, for, I love the Iron Man graffiti. I love that you see drawings of him in the back on the school wall. I love that it looks like Peter either took his sunglasses or... Uh, uh, what's his name? Happy Hogan gave him, 
Tony's exact sunglasses from like right. Infinity War. The the interesting comment I saw online, and I agree, is it's. I mean, it just feels. I, I again, and I like the trailer. Yeah. It's completely fine. I'm on board yeah. with this version of Spider Man, but it, and we'll see how that fill it plays out on film. It's just a trailer, but through you know two three three movie appearances in other films and then his own film and now this trailer um it's very it just feels a little odd that there's his biggest influence is tony yeah. and there's no there's literally nothing with uncle ben like that that is not an overarching theme for this nope. character nope it's not look i will acknowledge that initially this wasn't my spider-man right everybody knows that however the movie him playing Spider-Man in all these movies has started to grow on me. Uh, the first trailer was fun, but I really, I got hyped by this trailer. Now that they're really digging into the multiverse, you see uh, Quentin Beck's Mysterio costume looks amazing. The fishbowl head with the blue swirly, like, it, it, it actually works. It's super comic booky, but I thought it looks pretty cool. What do you think of his costume in this one, Anthony? I mean, he looks great in terms of... Um looking like Mysterio from the comics, that's, I, if you would have told me that they would have adapted Mysterio right. and made him look comic book accurate, I'd go, impossible. That guy looks ridiculous. But, I mean, the multiverse thing kind of makes sense. Um, this opens up a wide array of possibilities as far as the Marvel moving forward. Um, I do question if Mysterio is telling the truth. Yeah, I think, you know, it, whenever you deal he with is Mysterio, a yes, right. he's a bad guy. And all Mysterio stories, there's stuff that's never what it seems. Like, that's right. just classic Mysterio. He's an illusionist, right? Or some sort of... He's a spe he was a special effects guy uh, for movies originally. Right. and uh, But is he lying about... So there's a clip that uh, Jake Gyllenhaal came on Ellen and played a clip from the I movie. Yeah, where he says, this is Earth 616. Yeah. And I am from Earth 833. I was like, holy shit. So... Either he's not from that earth or he's just using that to lie. Uh, his, you know, his triangle magic is like different than the round Dr. Strange magic. So maybe he's from. It would make sense if there is a multiverse because in Endgame, they say that the Infinity Stones protect the, 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 the current timeline or universe or realm yeah, from yeah. Uh, different universes or different uh, multiverses or different uh, things invading because, but now that they're all gone because they returned all those time stones to their appropriate uh, timelines right. there is no there are no time stones in in this timeline of the of end game and all that so it, it's quite possible that they can just go into multiverse stuff it's always been a dc thing but um the marvel's had multiverse for marvel's, for, marvel's for done it yeah it's more it's more um popular when with dc yeah. but yeah again Marvel, marvel's done it for me it's it's just a strange and i'm not saying i don't like it it's just different I mean, you have Spider-Man with a huge Iron Man influence in Europe. Yeah. With Mysterio talking about the multi... Like, these are all, like, very strange things. This isn't, like, Spider-Man that I uh, would accustom to, like, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man no, in New York. Nothing, like, this is completely different. There's nothing friendly neighborhood about this. Mysterio's working with S.H.I.E.L.D. I do love how he's given shit to the cops in the beginning. So do you bit. think this is all like some kind of ruse? This, I, uh, some of this has got to be a work. I don't because I think the part where uh, Zendaya knows where she's like, I know you're Spider Man. That may be an illusion. That may be part of it. I read somewhere that in the comics, Mary Jane finds out that he's Spider Man. Well, she she him. she does, but like this is very soon. But this is not Mary Jane. I mean, everyone knows that he's Spider Man. I'm not even calling her MJ. I refused. I'm going to call her Zendaya. Yeah, you keep calling her Zendaya. I'm like, you're not going to call her MJ. Nope, because her um, name is Michelle. Well, um. <laughs> This is my view of it, is that uh, Mysterio is well known, not only for him uh, to be causing illusions, but he always has, like a con man, he has a team of people yeah. he usually works yeah. with. Yeah. And he has people helping him out. So, are is this like the Molten Man and Hydro Man pretending to be elementals? That's what it looks like. Uh, is it, um, uh, you know, is Nick Fury, even Nick Fury is, you know, who could it be? somebody else or could it be the chameleon or could it be something else like why would nick fury be working with i don't know there's a lot of different questions um the only thing that throws it off is colby smulders right like who is who is maria hill like who is being her like who you know the, they, they do know they do show that the people can change their faces and shit in marvel movies so oh uh, scrolls yeah i don't know yeah i mean uh, uh yeah the whole you know the 
the bit where th- he says Thanos snaps his fingers, it causes a rift in the multiverse. Uh, I you you can't take a, a lot of this for face value. Uh, Rugs, what did you think of the, this trailer overall? I thought it had a lot of great stuff, like "Bitch, please, you've been to space" was a great line. Right. I just think overall, it just seems like a a more uh, action f- filled movie yes. than the first yes. one. Yes. Like Homecoming, it was to it was a Ferris Bueller movie and. Peter Parker was Ferris Bueller, which he's not. Yeah. And uh, this at least seems like he's, okay, he's trying to go on vacation and he's in danger and he gets embroiled into this thing, which would happen to Spider-Man. It's more Spider-Man-y. Yeah. Because he's, you know, he's trying to have a a nice time and all of a sudden he's got to juggle his friends and trying to save the world and all that stuff. So it's it's kind of more in the vein of what Spider-Man is. So I did enjoy the trailer and I thought it would be, uh, it's probably, hopefully, steering more into what Spider-Man should be. But then, at the same time, you have all of this stuff. Talk about him being the new yep. Iron Man. Yep, yep. And I think, why why even write those lines? They're I, unnecessary. Yeah, I like, mean. It's unnecessary to try and equate <laughs> Peter Parker to Iron Man. It's it's like, you're going in the wrong direction, Marvel. That's I don't a, understand that's why. That's a good it. point. He is his own. I mean, he's the. He's uncle. his own hero. He's his own hero, he but. He doesn't need to be. He doesn't need to be. He's a scientist. He doesn't need to have armor on. No. He doesn't need all these toys. No. But they're trying to. I don't understand why, why they're doing it like this. I mean, they have, you know, they have rescue. They have war machine. They have. How many All people in fucking iron suits do you need, Marvel? I'll give him a. I do like I, the I black costume th- in this. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I could see. So I looked at that black costume. It does look like it's more homemade. Yeah. So I could. This is a possible storyline. I could see. I could see them being like, "You're the next Iron Man. You're the next Iron Man." And by the end, he realizes, "I'm not the next Iron Man. I'm just Spider Man." Like, get this away from if me. If they could I'm do my that, own guy. And, and that the door is open for that, right? They better walk through that door because if they don't, I'm going to be pissed. It looks like he's going to be wearing four different costumes in this movie. Starts with the Iron Spider, then you have his traditional red and blue, and then in Europe he's got the black costume. But then later in the scenes he has the red and black version, which with wings, which may be what Shield gives him or Tony left him. Like here's one last costume because I knew you'd come back or you wouldn't like the the uh, you wouldn't want to use the Iron Spider. Suit. Uh, the other thing I have issue. I would. I would like to see him remember Tony. Yes, it's, it's established. It has they, to. Yeah, they, they can't. They can't just ignore that. Yeah. But I would like to see him remember Tony, but then start to like if if Tony left him one last suit that he uses at the end, I wouldn't like that either. Yeah. I want him to start becoming his own guy. I feel like there may be one last suit that <laughs> Tony leaves him at the end that we'll immediately see. shows up. What if he? What if this is what happens? And it won't because it's too smart. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What if um, Happy Hogan, he's like, all right, listen, I'm going to take you to Tony's lab and you make your own suit. Oh, that would be fine. Uh, And he uses, he talks to the AI and it's the AI is Tony and they fucking sit there and they collab. And then Mm -hmm. at least he has, he's like, I don't want all this shit. He's like, you sure? He's like, yeah, I don't want to have the kill protocol on my fucking suit. There, there is a shot in here where he has like a uh, like a, a skeletal hologram frame of something on his forearm, like he's tinkering with some tech or something. So, and it looks like it's on that ship. The other thing I have a weird problem with this is so nitpicky. Flash getting punched in the nuts. That, Flash? Oh, no, uh, Flash. Only if Peter Parker does. No, be cool. no but <laughs> Flash is usually the guy punching people in the nuts, not to be the nut punchy. Yeah, I just don't like this version of Flash. I mean, it's, it's a whole the whole Spider Man's it's different. Just so upside down and now tying <laughs> into into the Spider Verse. Uh, there's a great meme Jess Rivera posted on our our Facebook group. Could it be possible that they bring in like? Can you imagine the Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield Spider Man coming in? That would be crazy. Oh my god, it's not gonna happen. I couldn't see. I, I mean, they with the multiverse, they could do that. Yeah. The the first riff I see that will happen. This is just my opinion. Um, the first riff that will happen is they will bring over Deadpool. Oh, really? Maybe not through Spider Man, but eventually the that, and the X Men. Yeah. Oh, through the mul- this multiverse idea, man. Yeah, that's crazy. Like the Fantastic Four eventually. But how does it through. tie the worlds together? Mm, they'll have to make something up. Yeah, it does. It. I mean, like, they could write it. They the, the the multiverse. Once you do that, I mean, well, they've already introduced time travel, and if like, they're saying what the if, multiverse, I mean, what if it causes two worlds to collapse into one another and become one world? Oh, well, kind of like in the comics. We'll do that incursions. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's called. 
Incur- yeah, there's a storyline with Jonathan Hickman where incursions happen and they take all the best parts of different Earth universes and put them into one world. That's a possibility. And then they have to undo it. Oh, that makes so that's stupid. That'd be great yeah. if they like create the Illuminati and then this fucking all this shit happens. You introduce Submariner. I, I Reed heard Richards. that. I don't know if it's in your notes because I don't look at all the notes thoroughly. But I heard that the uh, Comic Con they're going to start releasing all their Bob Iger. Movies Bob slate. Iger said this summer they will yeah. release Phase Four and they've released dates. We'll get into that in a little bit. But also, there's been tons of articles from the Russo brothers and Marcus and McFeely about Endgame, about the future of the MCU. Really interesting. Sometimes they're contradicting each other. In the case of what at where Cap actually lived, which timeline. The Russos and the writers don't agree. They both have their own ideas, which is weird because I thought you guys were working on the same fucking movie. But here's here's an interesting thing from what I noticed from this trailer. Yeah. Again, just a trailer. Who knows how it's going to play out on film? But man, uh, we're five years into the future. Half the world's come back. Yeah. Let's go on a trip to Europe. Let's go. (laughs) So again, this is 2023 Marvel. How do you react like that? Uh, here's the other question. So conveniently, all the main stars of this film were also disappeared sure, and came yeah, back. Very conveniently. Right? And half. So, yeah. so then the other half of their classmates are kids who were five years younger when they left. And now they're all in college and their they class have jobs. Yeah. Their classmates are. 20. So Joe Russo confirmed that Ned disappeared as well. That's the two of them seeing each other for the first time after having disappeared at the end of Endgame. Uh, And then he also said that doesn't mean that everyone they went to high school with didn't disappear. There could be kids who are now much older than them and no longer in high school. Both Ned and he both disappeared. But conveniently, Happy Hogan, Aunt May, uh, Zendaya, uh, Flash, Betty Brant, they all they all were disappeared and came back. And then they're like, hey, let's go to Europe. Forget about this shit. I guess I don't I don't know. Wow. But uh, we'll see how they play this out. So. I mean, it's It's going to be a problem. Yeah, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem. problem. Yeah, they're going to have to. Yeah. That I don't know that end game five year thing, man. Just because you want to have Tony Stark have a kid, you got to compromise all this stuff. It's gonna confuse, it's, and, and it doesn't mean anything. Him mm. having a kid means nothing. It just gave like a little bit of an emotional bump to him. That's it. They, yeah, it was so unnecessary they, that they I mean, did this. It, it, I think it means something, but it only means something to him. It, it only benefited that one character, right? That he yeah, had a kid. It wasn't worth it to do all, make all of this problem for that one kid to exist. Now they're going to have to write themselves worth, it w- out of it this. It would have been worth it if that was actually the end game, as in the last film. Right. Like they, they're making more films, so it is a problem. Yeah. Mm, it's going to be interesting. It just bugs me. Like, No, it's rough. It's a rough rough thing to accept moving forward. Rex, doesn't Mysterio look awesome, though? Come on. Got the fishbowl. Better looks, than he should. Yeah, yeah, it looks fucking great. And again, as with all Spider-Man movies, there's like a middle-aged white guy that appears to be a friend and ends up being the bad guy. That's like every Spider-Man movie. So you know uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio is going to burn him. He is a bad guy, people. Uh, listener, if you want to join the conversation, there's one thing you got to do. Join our Facebook group. It's called the Jock and Nerd Nation. It's closed. It's exclusive. It's just for you. There's amazing geek threads about time travel and alternate timelines and Game of Thrones spoiler threads every week. It's a lot of fun and a lot of weird memes. Welcome this week, a whole bunch of people. Thanks for adding your friends, Nation. Welcome to Nicholas Gakin, Benny Dealey, Eric Bangert, Henry Claremont, Ashley Leanne, Scrooge Jones, Aaron Butler, and Andrea Venegas. Jockey nerd! <laughs> Welcome to the, Welcome. the empire of its stupidity. Hopefully this is, if this is your first episode, I don't know why you clicked on this, but I hope you're enjoying it. Thanks for checking us out. And uh, Seth Morgan had a great joke. The group of Gak and Dealey and Banger should start a, a law office right away. because they got, <laughs> It does sound like they, they got, have a commercial. I think you'd be great injury lawyers. If you've been in an auto accident. <laughs> it's like uh, damage control. Ask Call Thanos Dealey, Bus- Banger, yes. and Claremont. Did the Hulk smash through at your home? Call Gak and Dealey and Banger, and we'll get you all the money you deserve. It'd be amazing. Oh, yeah, banger. Not I went to the wrong. I went the wrong wrong direction on that. One. You banger. I barely know her. You brought her. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, Avengers Endgame, we have to check in on this monstrous box office of this fucking movie. It is doing things that I didn't think were possible and tickling Either me too unheard of. Yes, tickling me, tickling me in places I didn't know I had. Woo. Well, oh man, and uh. At Box Office Mojo, we have a production budget, $356 million. Jeez. Oh, shit. Which is actually, I thought it was going to be like half a million on each movie. They were so like, I thought they were spending a billion dollars for these two movies. 
But $356 million is the fucking budget, right? Right now, it's sitting domestic in 12 days, 13 days of release, $652 million domestic, worldwide $2.3 billion. Oh, shit. Dollars. Wow. <laughs> in yeah. 13 days. Now, we went over... The fastest movies to a billion, and it didn't even occur to me to look up fastest movies to two billion, and it did it so fast. First of all, this thing puts it at number two all time worldwide, right behind Avatar. Avatar? Okay, which is unbelievable. Uh, it's a, it, it passed Titanic, passed Star Wars: Force Awakens, passed Infinity War. It is at number seven all time domestic, and we're still only the movie's been out thirteen days. This is the fastest movie to a billion, fastest movie to one and a half billion, and fastest movie to two billion dollars. How fast? Well, it made a billion dollars in five days. It made one and a half billion in eight days, and it made two billion dollars in eleven days. Oh wow. shit! The next movie on the list is Avatar, which it took forty-seven days to make it to two billion. But there's a lot of reasons why. I want to get into that a little bit. But check this out: there are. Five movies that have grossed over $2 billion, and Zoe Saldana is in three of them. Wow. She's in that pretty good track record. You want a $2 billion movie, you put Zoe Saldana in it. <laughs> Might happen. I mean, so it's Avatar and... Uh, the two Avengers movies. And the two, two Avengers, Avengers movies, and then Force Awakens and Titanic is the right. five movies that have made $2 billion. Uh, Avatar made $2.5 billion in 72 days. Do you guys think this beats the unadjusted for inflation gross of Avatar at two point seven billion? No, no, does it? I think it. I think it makes three billion dollars. I think it. Yeah, I think it might beat it. The only what thing is that, the adjusted for like inflation? Okay, we'll get into that. Don't, yeah, that's a completely different because it made two point seven like in two thousand and nine. Adjusted for inflation, it's over three billion dollars. Oh shit! Okay, yes. I think it could beat yeah, Avatar. It will. It will. Um, the only thing that's going to get Avatar went up was one of those that was a blockbuster in the the winter and had nothing. Yes, it had January February of nothingness to compete against. Where Avengers, although not like powerhouse movies, but Aladdin's coming out, Godzilla, like there's much more competition in the summer and staying power. The movies I think don't stay as long in the summer because of the, the quick turnaround and more right. movies coming out. Right. Uh, Ruggs, I found this article from the Washington post. It made a lot of good points. Why Avengers Endgame will never really be bigger than avatar. It may make more money now, but a couple of the big reasons tickets cost more now, you know, you got to adjust for inflation. Of course. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that was different when avatar came out is, this movie came out globally day and date. That's unprecedented. That is a new right. thing. Avatar rolled out like three, uh, rolled out longer. Even Star Wars Force Awakens three years ago didn't open in China until three weeks later, right? Right. So this is all stretched out. And then inflation is a big deal. Uh, also, Avatar had fewer screens. Yeah, I think that uh, China has become more of a player since then. This is yeah. some amazing numbers here. Right now, China has been responsible for $576 million of the... I think Avatar was the movie The Crack It, of, too. Yeah, of the 1.6 billion foreign uh, Avatar uh, in China, or Endgame made $576 million. Triple the $204 million Avatar took in there. But back in 2009... There were not that many movie theaters. In fact, it wasn't this open, huge movie market. There were, yeah. there were whole towns and cities. This is crazy. Back then, 2009, China had just under 5,000 screens. Today, estimated 60,000 movie screens in China. Oh, shit. Topping the United yeah, States of, that has yeah. 41,000 movie screens. They have more fucking movie screens than we do. Well, if right. you want to play this game, though, yeah. I'm looking at Box Office Mojo yeah. online. Yeah. If you want to play the adjusted for ticket price inflation, now this is only lo I'm only looking at it looks like domestic here, but the all timer is gone with the win. Yes. Well, you have you're gone with the wins. You got probably which was in 1939. Yes. It made 200 million back then. Yes. Which is equivalent to 1.8 billion domestic. Adjusted, I think it's at like number nine. It's not uh, worldwide, but domestic, it's at 35. And you're right. Right. You got 
things like the sound of music, the Ten Commandments. Right. Um, I mean, if you want to play the adjusted yeah. for inflation game, this then the, the, the they'll be they'll be astronomical numbers. Yeah. Which I mean, can any movie ever make a billion dollars domestically? I don't think. Has that been? Well, yeah. it was done. Maybe with Avatar, almost got there. No, right? it wasn't. No. Mm. no, no. The closest was Star Wars. Nine hundred so domestically yeah. was um, Star Wars at nine thirty six. So if you're, Force Awakens. If you're any game, you got ten times more screens on which to play on in China, and you know, the widest release ever. Is it at that feat Avatar pulled off? Still is is very impressive. I think considering it's. I look. I think that Endgame had been built up over ten years. Yes. Um. It had you know this whole new fandom that opened up for this thing and now become religious fa- uh, rabid fans. There's conventions to support this comic books, TV shows that support all of this stuff. James Cameron just had his balls. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. And, and his, and his idea of being an innovator in 3d technology, using yeah. graphics, everybody likes to shit on avatar, but I mean, you got to give it credit where credit is due. He fucking, he fucking made the most expensive practical movie yeah. and yep. and with true lies and he made fucking this movie Avatar with it just all CG and now all the movies are done like this. So um and all original side I mean original could be debated in terms of story but original yeah, things I, I would go original. I mean not the story but the IP, the characters. If you think about right. You know, the Navi and Terminator and Aliens, like all are kind of not, this, this is not an he, adaptation. I remember watching Avatar back in 2009, and the reason I went out to see it was for two reasons. Number one, James Cameron was back. Yeah. I was like, if James Cameron is doing a big budget release, yeah. I have to go watch Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Number two, he was bringing back 3D, and he was like, this three, like the technology that I'm incorporating in this film with the 3D, it's a event that you have to see. Yeah. And I watched it in 3D, and I was like, oh, shit. Like, I'm immersed in this world yeah. that he created. Like, this lived up to the hype. So those were the two reasons I saw it. And then it ended up being a film that's easily palatable to anybody that watches movies. Yeah. Because it's a story you've seen a million and times. it's Pocahontas. It's dances But, it, but it's wolves, told yeah. in a, it's shown, it's displayed in a way that's unique. The so. 3D, that's what got me, too. And I remember the 3D was Yeah, the amazing. 3D was a huge marketing thing. Yes, and it was amazing for the time. And now you see a lot of these movies doing that. And I think since... It's, it was even... I mean, even now like compared to now yeah. like, he did a way better yeah. like he actually with those thinking of incorporating the 3d yeah. whereas a lot of these movies are adding 3d you felt post. in it like it was around you instead of things being thrown at you right right it was nuanced world building yes the world building was great the fact that he invented fucking plants for this planet like you didn't have to do that right you really didn't have well, to invent plants. i'm curious if he could ever i mean now that disney is owning well, avatar yes um, you know, they're going to put their weight behind it. And now, you know, you see James Cameron making nice with Disney. Did you he see was, that? Yeah. When he was bashing the Marvel universe. And, and then, then, yeah, he, he put out, out that thing, thing. So like, showing them sink the Titanic. But it, it that changes things. When your boss changes, hey, you know, who knows, to kiss, he knows who's kiss signing his to, fucking right? paychecks now. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, oh, you. Oh, I'm over here now. Oh, good oh, job. Right. Thank you. Yes. I love. Well, these listen, movies. like James Cameron, he was shooting, uh, you know, threes all the time. Nobody in his way. Nobody swatting at him. There's no one gonna get near him. Now he's got a lot of competition. Yep, yep. He's got to. He's got to step his game up. So uh, I still think he's the one to bring back original sci-fi content, blockbuster style. I was gonna add that his. I mean, we're, we'll get into this release schedule, but Disney's banking on him to. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, he's a big part of their their future in terms of making money, like he's making one billions of, their, of dollars. Yeah, he's he's an one of the pillars. Now. He's going to yeah. be an anchor. Before he, yeah. it is literally Marvel films, yep. Star Wars yep. films, and Disney Cameron. live action, yeah. Pixar, and now James Cameron. And Avatar. Like, that's what they're banking on. Uh, and like that's billions and billions of that's potential all billions dollar franchise coming in. Before we get to that, it's a great story. One last side note: Do you want to know how much Robert Downey Jr. got paid? Sure. Or Infinity War. Uh, why don't you guys guess? He made. I'll let, you know, I'll let you know this. He made a back end deal, which sounds hot. Geek it's not what you think it is. Uh, the, Downey, play, the, play, play the Chaz clip. Uh, their bottom is is very weak. Back end deal. Go. Downey receives from the Avengers movie. Considering that, how much? What's your estimate, Rugs? What'd you say? Thirty million. Hey, Anthony. Hundred million. Oh shit! You've both underbid and overbid. Anthony's closer. Seventy-five million dollars. Sources say he grows oh, shit. for oh, shit. Infinity War that made two billion dollars. Seventy-five million for a fucking. I mean, I can't say the guy's 
earned it because it's in the end of the day it's acting and it's you know there's lots of people out there that do tougher jobs but I feel like teachers he, should he be. He was an instead. integral part of everything. Was, I mean, he was, and, the and his acting throughout the entire franchise has been really good. I feel like if you have to do something ridiculous to make a movie work, yeah, like m- wear ridiculous makeup, like be in six hours of makeup yeah. every day, yeah. you should, you know. But if you just show up and like just act like an asshole and, and a, <laughs> on, a, on, a, on a green and, screen, uh, yeah, and a lot of times they just need his face to put him in the fucking yeah. helmet. Like, what are you really doing? I but mean, he, not that he, Robert Downey Jr. is an asshole, but <laughs> Tony Stark acts like an asshole. But he is the <laughs> franchise. He nailed the character. He's really the reason this has gotten so big. Uh, for Homecoming in 2017, he worked for three days. He got five million dollars. <laughs> oh uh, shit! Three days? Yes. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> three days of shooting, five million dollars. Uh, uh, unbelievable! All right, let's. That dude's life changed so much from like 20. The years thing ago. is, he was at the <laughs> bottom of his fucking career before yeah. Iron Man. Like, can you imagine where he like? What a turnaround! Yeah, uh, amazing. amazing way for him to clean up. It's amazing. It is such a redemption story. Yeah, for Tony and for Robert. Uh, so the other big news, Disney and Fox uh, have put out a bunch of dates of their movies moving forward. Now, a lot of untitled stuff, but we kind of have a framework of what Disney is now. Like, this has got to be a scheduling nightmare now that they own all this shit. Oh, my God. And have to figure out how to not cannibalize. How to compete with each other. Yes. How do, you, right. how do you fucking do this? They got to just, like. Uh, do programming that is opposite. But a lot of this stuff is in the same wheelhouse. It's in the That's same it. kind of genre. So here's a couple of the big points. Starting at 2022, listener, expect your Christmases to be ruled by Star Wars and Avatar alternately. Oh, shit. One year back and forth, which is fucking crazy. So Avatar 2 got pushed back. It was going to come out 2020. Uh, and now it's coming out 2021 Avatar 2. Jesus. 2022 will be Star Wars. 2023 Avatar 3 Christmas. Then Star Wars. Then Avatar 4. Then Star Wars. Then 2027 Avatar 5 December. So for the next almost decade, what, uh, you guys, it's going to be nothing but fucking Star Wars and Avatar back. And they're both. They're not really competing. Why, why are you saying just those two movies? Wait, I'm gonna, t- I'm gonna, MCU movies. I'm gonna start. What about Stuber? I'm Stuber. <laughs> um, Who's Stuber? No. <laughs> what about the? But there's a Bob's. That caught my eye. There's a Bob's Burgers movies too. I'm just starting there with their Christmas releases, which we know okay. makes a lot of money. Uh the and the other thing is this Avatar sequel. Twelve years later, comes. I mean, out. if the, I was thinking about this. So real quick on Avatar. There isn't really anyone asking for Avatar sequels. Nope, Let's nope. be honest. There's no need for it. Nope, There's no need nope, for them. Nope, nope. But, and I was like, why are they doing this? Other than to make money. Like, this is, this seems stupid. But James Cameron is the king of making sequels to movies way later. Like, he, Terminator 1 and Terminator 2 had a lot an eight year gap or yeah, something like that. Yeah. And he made a sequel to Alien like eight or six or seven years and later. And his sequel movies are always fucking amazing. Really good. Yeah. His sequels are. Arguably but, yes, better than the original. Absolutely. In terms of Terminator <laughs> and Aliens, like those are they're amazing sequels. Like So if there's anyone to pull it off. It's him. It's him. If he's going underwater, if he's showing us new worlds. Uh, so odd that a sequel's coming out twelve years thirteen later. years later. Twelve, <laughs> 12 13 13 years, years later. later. Uh, in this era when sequels yeah. come out two to three years later. So yeah. It is yeah. very odd, yeah. but who knows? It could be good. And, and I don't that, think it's I think it's I think it's gonna be not in a regular kind of sequel that we think about. It's yeah. more like a continuation of this idea of avatars, yeah. like of being able to become something and in another world. Maybe, so it's like yeah. a loose sequel. I well, think. he may start to serialize it too with seeing well, how what the Marvel movies are doing. The fact that he has five. Yes. Of them. How much money are you <laughs> spending on this? Billions of Probably dollars. That, but like, how? What? What? What could? What, where is there five, four more stories coming from? How old am I going to be in 2027? I can't even <laughs> fucking do the math. Well, I even want to see this. I don't know. Be, what the about the fact that we are getting three more Star Wars movies, a new trilogy? I don't know if it's going to be. Is that the. My friend Erwin brought 12, this up. I don't know. Is this the. Ryan Johnson? Is it that or know. is it the, uh, the Game, Game of, of Thrones, Thrones guys? Uh, we don't know. Huh. They both have trilogies. I hope it's the Game of Thrones guys, not the Ryan Johnson guys. Uh, One, maybe. But. Star Wars ain't going anywhere either, and at least they're given oh. a year break in between, which should help. <laughs> uh, New Mutants push back again. Oh, fuck that. Yeah. That movie's never. That movie's yeah. still coming out at some point. Now, here's the big 
Here's the big deal regarding the MCU movies. Because, look, Endgame made $2 billion. But can they really reproduce this? This took 11 years of slowly building this up. I don't see how you reproduce this, uh, reproduce this unless you start again slow and small and build this up for another 10 years to get this hype. But eight untitled MCU movies on the schedule, two in 2020, three in 2021, and three in 2022. And I think we can largely guess what most of these are going to be and get a good look I at what's coming. I think you can do this. Like, like, we can guess what they are. There's always going to be sequels to things that already came out, like Captain Marvel and shit like that, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else? Black, I think, Black listen, Panther. I think... Tw- That's a given, I think right? 2020, the two movies we're getting is going to be Black Widow the Eternals. I think you can pretty much bank on that. They're, yeah. they're both ramping up production on these movies. After that, yeah. I'm not sure. Really? I mean, you can go Black Panther. Well, I just don't Dr. know what Strange. order they would do them. Yeah. Yeah. Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, Guardians. Guardians. Those Shang-Chi. are all getting stuff. Shang Chi is a thing, so that's five that we've nailed right there. I don't I mean, think we're going to see any fantastic. And how many more or, are there? There's eight. Yeah, or there's, there's eight. There's eight eight slots. Um, hmm. I think that they're going to go for space stuff because that. See, the thing is, it's like if you have everything on Earth, yeah, then you it, it can get sloppy, right? Yeah. But if you do something either that um is out in outer space where it's galaxies away, you can do whatever you want. Absolutely, you know what I mean. So they could do Silver Surfer. Yeah. They can do yeah. shit like that. I mean, they got us used to like grounded uh, superhero movies and slowly moved us into the cosmic, into the multiverse, into the crazy things. And I think that's where it's going to head with the Eternals and just get bigger and just wackier. And now we have multiverses and the quantum realm and celestials. Uh, but is this is, so look, well, what do you want to see? Imran? I don't know. Here's my question. 2020 <laughs> comes around. I don't know. He just. Completely side. Uh, no, but what I'm trying to think, what do I feel about? Look, 2020, it's probably going to be Black Widow and the Eternals for 2020 and a whole bunch of Disney Plus shows. I don't know how that's kind of, I don't know. Is that exciting? I don't really know. I don't, I don't feel that excited. I feel like, and this is going to sound like really shitty, but I'm just still like, let, we should just play spin the wheel of things that they haven't exploited yet. So, <laughs> okay. uh, you know, they, they're going to try and cover all their bases. Marvel's not stupid. Yeah. They're going to try and go for every market that's been uh, neglected. Sure. So, you know, uh, who knows what they're going to call out. But they're going to, they're, they're definitely been doing these event movies, you know, getting people involved, using social media, making things happen, like with hype. That's just more than just a superhero movie. It becomes something. So I think there's still a lot of room for people to be represented. There's still got a lot of room to make events out of things, and I think Marvel's going to capitalize that. They've been they've been doing nothing but winning with that strategy. So, I mean, the movies aren't so much of a fatiguing thing for me, but thinking about all the TV shows that are now going to be um, Fihe produced, because I know you keep holding on to the fact that Agents of Shield is, is no, part of it. It's not. You're, it's you're not. right. It's pretty much been confirmed <laughs> that it's not. Uh, but the Fihe stuff. Seems like it's gonna be an integral part of all this stuff, yeah. and I feel I'm already a, a little overwhelmed by trying to follow. It's saturated that. with yeah. it, yeah. I mean, what do they have? Four shows? I think three or yeah, four. I'm they got WandaVision. Much. WandaVision. They got Loki. a Loki show. They got Falcon and Falcon Winter Soldier, and, which may be like him figuring out how to be Captain America. And, and then some. I was talking to David Taylor on my own show. He, he said Hawkeye. There may, yeah, there, there may be a Hawkeye show where so that's a lot. If they man. keep them to There's like what six or show. eight episodes each. That's what it's going to be. They're going to be short. Like run. Sherlock. Yeah. You know how Sherlock comes out in England? Like they they give you a few episodes and then they tell like a complete story in in that release. Well, the Sherlock is, the is great because they're an hour and a half movies and there's three of them or four of them in a season. Yeah, and it's so satisfying. Yeah, they basically yeah. They tell you it's a basically a giant movie that they f- split into three parts, and it works. It and, works so well. Yeah, and uh, they just do them, and they come out in little chunks, and you're like not overwhelmed by it. You can like watch it in a weekend. Boom, it's done. Well, Harry, you, I mean, you get to spend six to eight hours with with Falcon and Bucky, and then the, him figuring out if he wants to be the next Captain America or whatever. Yeah, keep it tighter. They don't need to do these thirteen episodes. No, it or whatever. should not be. So, anyways, well, uh, should not be. Should not be. I, when, since when do you talk like I that? Should not it be. It should not be, sir. It shan't. <laughs> you ever use the word shan't? I shan't be doing that. I shan't myself. I shan't myself all the time. Oh shit. Oh shan't. Uh, okay. Last thing in the news, real quick. 
to your comment, Anthony, about Agents of Shield. By the way, new seasons of Agents of Shield start starts tomorrow when we record. It'll be out. Uh, the the first episode of season oh my six. God. You forget- Did you mention that the whole Ghost Rider thing was happening? This is what I want to get to. Disney oh. has announced that coming to Hulu will be a Ghost Rider and Hellstrom TV show. And then we got further details that Gabriel Luna. They're separate shows or are they together? I think they're two shows and they're going to set up their, uh, what's it called? What's a Hellstrom? Hellstrom is like their version of Hellblazer, which is John Constantine. Oh, a guy who's a, DC. Who's, uh, I see. Hellstrom is uh, Satan's son. He has a pentagram on his chest and he deals with demons and shit. Okay. Fair Sounds enough. very familiar to John Constantine. It's, it's the, it is totally, Damon Hellstrom is there, John Constantine. Gabriel Luna, who played Robbie Ray as Ghost Rider in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, apparently is coming back, but he's saying this is not the same character from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's yeah, going like, to be, fuck that. You know, we're starting over. This is a new iteration. He was good. He was very good. I'm glad to see him back. But, Anthony, to further evidence of what you said, uh, the, the, the showrunners of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. are like, yeah, we're not really going to be dealing with the snap or anything over here. So, uh, they need to give them sorry. a cycle. We can't. They, the agents are shit. They're like, we filmed it. We don't know what was going to happen. So there's, you know. Yeah, it's all. It's not a thing. It's just, it's I think they thing. should give him a motorcycle. Uh, it shouldn't be Ghost Driver. Go, he's ghost a rider. rider. Yeah. You did it for. So they're going to do a Spirits of Vengeance branding that will be all these shows. Maybe they'll be R rated. Maybe this opens the door for the Netflix shows to come back. Speaking of which, Ooh, The Punisher. Yeah. Jessica Jones put out a promo. Final season, season three, still coming. It will be the last. So I there's no date, but sometime this year or whenever I'll watch it. I'll totally watch it. I'll, I'll watch it, too. and it'll be nice to know that this is the last one, and like kind of close it out with one of the better. Yeah, we gotta be series. completest about this shit. Which we is do. why I'm still watching Agents of Shield. I was there from the beginning. I will still continue to be there to the end. Oh, I bailed Just out on so like many shows. Just like <laughs> Yes, I know. <laughs> All right, that's it for the news, uh, listener. What I have for you next is a pretty awesome pre-recorded conversation. I'm gonna cut in here. I talked to this dude, Dylan Hill, him and his buddy Clay. They're two young guys, millennials, doing some amazingly good stuff for a change. Oh, shit. Millennials. Whoa. Yes. Wow. Millennials he, doing good things. I know, right? For a change. He subbed that in there. I can't wow. believe. I like the, I like the passive aggressiveness for him, Ron. <laughs> like he can't ever actually be mean, so he's got to be a little passive aggressive. That's This is my ammo. Look, these guys are using the power of social media, YouTube videos, Geeky fandom and the hype from Avengers Endgame to help kids with cancer. And it's That's awesome. It's an amazing, amazing uh, journey they're on. You know what? I'm just going to let him tell you all about it. Here it is. The Jock, Jock and Ned Podcast. Dylan, thanks for coming on the Jock and Nerd Podcast. How's it going? I'm doing very well. How are you doing? I'm very good and excited to help you guys uh, spread the word of this video series you got. You reached out to us, and, I, and I, I read this, and I checked it out. It's called One List, One Life, and it's amazing. Why don't you just go ahead and tell the listener what is One List, One Life? Yeah, so it's myself and my friend, I guess kind of similar to your show. Um, we create a video series where we help cancer patients live out their bucket list. So we kind of took the idea of, you know, there's all these big YouTubers and influencers and viral videos and things like that. What if we did that kind of thing and applied it to genuinely helping people? We helped people who, you know, are facing terminal illnesses experience once in a lifetime moments. And we document that and we share it with people across the world. It's amazing. I've checked out some of these videos and man, uh, I, pro- I I tear up by the end of every one of them. Really? Uh, that's, I guess that's a good thing. It's a good thing. No, <laughs> yeah, it's good tears. They're, and they're really funny. They're really well done. You guys do a good job. Your personalities are there. You and your buddy Clay, uh, who is wearing a cheetah costume on the front page of your website and seems to like to wear costumes. Yeah, well, actually, he doesn't really like to wear the costumes, but somehow I, I managed to make him be the uh, the fall guy. That's and so excellent. we just put him in the costumes. <laughs> Uh, that's great. Uh, you, you know what? This is amazing. How old of a, of a dude are you? I'm 20. Wow. You are yeah. 20. <laughs> just okay. a little baby. <laughs> so let's just say, look, in the age of, you know, cry baby millennials and fire festival influencers <laughs> and toxic fandom amongst geeks of all kinds, you, you are someone who's doing something, uh, amazing. And uh, it's something where everyone knows someone who is, who is affected by cancer at this point. Right. Right. You know, yeah. Uh, more than one. It is a completely common, 
a current. So I don't even know if I've ever shared this with the listener. For me, on my side, my father, his sister, her son, so my cousin, and my mother-in-law. Wow. All uh, taken by cancer. And that's just the ones I know of. Right. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's it's rough. Uh, what made you guys start this uh, at such a young age? Yeah. Um, well, we were kind of forced to do it, which is kind of a weird thing to hear for a lot of people because, um, you know, they, we're not this nice <laughs> by default. <laughs> we, we realized that um, this was an opportunity for us to make a big difference when a friend of ours, he um, actually our friend since third, fourth grade, way back when, oh, wow. he was uh, recently re-diagnosed with leukemia. And, mm. and this time the doctors told him um, he had a year to live. And we spent a lot of time talking. And eventually I basically just came to the conclusion, you know what, if, if we do have a year, we're going to make that year count. And so I dropped out of college and him and I, um, we started posting these videos and we said basically, hey, internet, we have a bucket list of started off with 50, moved to 100, things that we want to accomplish in this next year. Can you help us? And that video, the first video we posted went super duper viral um, wow. across all the different social medias at this point. That story has like over 100 million views, just ridiculously viral. We were able to do some really incredible things. Um, so essentially... You know, we were able to do like celebrity type things. So we got a shout out from The Rock. We met nice. Danny DeVito. Wow. But we were also able to do um, some really random things. At one point, we were doing backflips and helicopters. We got a giant check. We handed out um, food to strangers at like red lights. It's a really silly thing. Yeah. Uh, we did some really cool stuff. Like we went to SpaceX, um, just a whole bunch of stuff. It's hard to think of specific examples. But really, the most incredible moment was when we sort of planned on crossing number four off of our bucket list, which was to break a world record. And we actually decided to try and break the world record for the most bone marrow donor signups. Wow. Okay. And, and this whole time we were documenting this entire experience. So anytime we had an idea, we'd say it and then, you know, it'd come to fruition and we, and we do it. And our community was there the entire time. But for this, we said, Hey guys, we need you to register to be a bone marrow donor, which for people who aren't familiar, um, that's essentially a surgery. It's yeah. not a super complicated surgery, but a surgery nonetheless. Yeah. We said, hey, on April 1st, we're going to try and break this world record. We need you guys to share this. We did break that record. Wow. Uh, in fact, over the span of our entire the entire video series, we inspired over 11,000 people to join the bone marrow registry, wow, which amazing. is mind-blowing yeah. in itself. But one of those people, we actually still don't know who it is, but a stranger from Europe was the person that my friend needed to get an organ, the bone marrow and basically um, resolve his leukemia. You know, it's his second shit. battle, and yeah. um, it's as gone as it can be. And that was because, I mean, it's a weird sentence to say, but that was because of our YouTube subscribers. <laughs> no, this because of uh, your, 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 I mean, so that bone marrow saved his life? Yeah, yep. Wow. And he has since uh, finished up his surgery, and, you know, as good as he can be, considering he's had cancer. Unbelievable. Yeah, <laughs> and that and that one number four thing. Imagine how many other people were helped and saved by the the influx of uh. Well, so when you don't you sign up to donate bone marrow, you have to actually go and donate the marrow. Yeah, so it's a pretty complicated process. It's all genetically based. Ah. So what you basically the the signing up for a bone marrow thing is very simple. You right. actually you sign up online, you get a cheek swab, and you just. Swap it in your cheek, you mail okay. it back in. And then with that, they use that to um, look at their database of people who need bone marrow, compare that to potential donors. And then if you get selected, they answer or ask you a bunch of questions. I see. Then if you get through there, yeah. <laughs> then it's it's a uh, outpatient procedure. And um, yeah. That's amazing. But it's life-saving. It is literally, I mean, we saw firsthand how life-saving it is. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible, you know, because everyone that signed up for that, they watched our videos and they were a part of that. And, you know, a young guys like myself, I grew up when YouTube and all these things were kind of becoming popular and, yeah. and all these people yeah. were talking about community and stuff like that. But we really saw firsthand what that meant. And Clay and I, um, Clay is not the one with cancer, but Clay and I, you know, we went through that entire process. We saw what our community did for us. And, and we thought, you know, we're not, we can't stop here. We need to keep going and we need to tell the story about other people and what they're going through. And, you know, sometimes people have cancer that we can't raise awareness and, and solve, right. but we can tell their story and we can tell their story in a unique way. And we can inspire people to realize that, I mean, Clay and myself, we, 
we're nothing special. <laughs> I mean, we're literally college dropouts. Um, but, you know, if we just put in a little bit of effort, we can make some really incredible stuff possible. So we started reaching out to just cancer patients we, we've seen online. Uh, the first person we started helping was Lexi. She is from Ohio, actually. We're from California, so it's quite the distance. Um, but we've been helping her for the past year. We've, like, helped her uh, meet a cheetah. She was within <laughs> hugging That's distance amazing. of a cheetah. Wow. Swim with dolphins, um, go to the beach, meet a couple of um, famous people that she was fans of, just a whole bunch of awesome stuff. And then about a month ago or so, we started helping a young boy named Talon, um, who's also going through stage four cancer. And and really, it, we, we call it live for another is the hashtag we use. The idea is, you know, we're, we're all going through this thing. Life, it sucks. <laughs> it's yeah. hard for everybody, but you know, maybe maybe we can do it together, and maybe we can all put in a little bit of effort to just do our best. And in our case, that happens to um, apply to helping out people with cancer. Unbelievable, and I love that you're using you know the actual power of social media and community to actually do good and not you know to, uh, make like a um, MLM marketing scheme or some sort of <laughs> right. bullshit social media thing. And these lists are really amazing. I, I encourage the listener to go check out the website, One List, One Life, because it's everything from very simple everyday things to just very ambitious things. Uh, and I love the combination because there's somebody out there that can help you get closer to all of these things on these lists. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it, it's interesting because all the people we've talked about or talked with and, and plan these bucket lists and the things you'll see on our website, these people have actually never thought about making a bucket list. They always say that to ah, us. They say, you know, I was given a 17% chance to live and that never even crossed my mind. And we say, yeah, well, that's understandable. Here's what we learned making ours. And, you know, one of the insights that we give them is what you just said. Like, it doesn't need to be something crazy extravagant. Sure. It's a small thing. Yeah. And, you know, we like to think of a bucket list as sort of like a almost like a journal in a weird way. Sure. It's like, it's, it's a way to tell, you know, what's important to them and, and what, well, really what they want to accomplish, you know, and, and who they are. And it's just all, it's really about happiness at the end of all these things. It's like, what would make me just happy? It's something very simple. Uh, yeah. I watched the Lexi video where she's playing with puppies and I love puppies and we do a lot of foster dog stuff. And I just like, that got to me. I was like, Oh my God. And it's such a simple thing you could do for someone. Uh, is 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 take them to uh, a shelter and have them play right. with puppies. Yeah, and there's there's also some big things on there. Yeah, so <laughs> that's what I was going to ask you. What are yeah. some of the what are in your in your opinion? What are some of the like, most ambitious, biggest things that you would need a little bit of help getting to? Maybe one of the listeners knows somebody that knows sure. somebody that knows somebody. Yeah. So with all of our things, when we're helping people, with, you know, these people, Lexi and Talon, um, there's things that require awareness. For example. Um, Lexi wants to meet a Marvel actor, which is mm. part of the story of why I reached out to you. Um, yep. And, you know, we could have a billion dollars, but that won't allow us to just get Robert Downey Jr. to, to appear. Yeah. The inverse of that is we need money. Lexi wants to go to Europe. Yeah. Talon wants to go to Hawaii. Actually, they both want to go to Hawaii. Um, you know, we could have a billion people watching us and they couldn't get them to Hawaii yeah. necessarily. Yeah. So um, there's kind of big aspirations in different ways. The one that we've really been a lot, focusing on a lot recently for Lexi was to help her meet a Marvel actor. I mean, you know, Avengers Endgame came out, so yeah. we thought it was topical. Yeah. Um, at, one of the things we tried back in August of last year, we tried to watch every single Marvel movie. At the time, I think it was 19 or so. Yeah, I see, I see that out of her list. How'd that go? The event itself was awesome. Yeah. Every, you know, all our viewers came out and watched. We, uh, we sat on a couch for 48 hours straight it was rough <laughs> but it was <laughs> right. lots of fun yeah um, and our goal there was to raise awareness for lexi's bucket list item um we did get some buzz which was awesome uh, unfortunately it didn't really work out so i guess in uh, sort of our typical fashion we said well hey okay let's try another crazy thing um so we uh we actually tried to sneak into the end game premiere yes i love this this is a great <laughs> video now yeah tell the listener how that went because this is a great idea like you said the awareness, like if everyone bands together, you get a hashtag, you keep tweeting at Marvel Studios and these actors, uh, somebody's going to see something and they love doing these kind of things. Yeah. So the awareness yeah. is important. So how uh, how close did you get to this premiere there, Dylan? I'm I'm about 75% sure Bradley Cooper rocked right by me. Oh, um, nice. <laughs> That's awesome. We had gotten past security, which really wasn't that hard. That sounds way more really? dramatic than, mm. than it was. 
Um, yeah, I, w- we had the fancy tuxes and stuff, so it kind of looked like we belonged. Um, the hard part then was trying to get onto the red carpet. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of where we got held up, and and we kind of stumbled over our words because we were freaking out so much. And I think they they realized that we definitely did not belong there, and then they uh, they kicked us out, and and it was it was funny. That's pretty close. Um, that's pretty damn close, though. Yeah, uh, we were yeah, we were about a uh, curtain away. Um, actually, they were on the other side of a curtain. Was the red carpet? <laughs> so we were very close. That's amazing. And the other thing I really love about your your videos is the transparency the honesty like you guys have these uh, goals and uh, and sometimes you may not hit them which is fine it's like things happen but you're very honest and but you tried it's got to start somewhere uh i can see the effort it's it's amazing which leads to uh the next thing you got buzz about is renting out an entire theater to play uh for avengers endgame for cancer patients tell us about that yeah well uh all these sort of marvel related things have been really to help Lexis and to generate buzz and get awareness. This one in particular, Clay and I do this thing. It's actually kind of a problem. Anytime we're alone in a car together, we come (laughs) up with crazy ideas. (laughs) And this is, this is one of the ideas we're thinking, okay, how can we get, how can we try again to get Marvel's attention? At one point we were planning on getting tattoos on our butts. That's a whole nother story. That could work. But eventually we came to the conclusion of, Hey, what if, you know, we, we did the same thing trying to, you know, get awareness for Lexi's bucket list. But at the same time, we helped other people nearby. And so we, we reached out to a bunch of movie theaters and we basically said, Hey, can we rent out a theater? Uh, you know, for Endgame, the most anticipated yes. <laughs> movie of all time. Uh, can you let us just, you know, get a, a screening? And, and so really the planning process was just a matter of sending emails and then paying for it, yeah. which wasn't very exciting in itself. But um, kind of along the thing you would just mention of, you know, being honest, we weren't able to get that many people to show up. Uh, which is, <laughs> it's it's really interesting. And I think part of, you know, when we're telling our stories is the fact that, like you said, it's, o- it's okay to fail. Yes. And, and you we mess up a lot. Yeah. And uh, like I said before, we're stupid. Like, like, we don't know what we're doing, but you know what? We're trying. And even if we didn't get that entire theater booked full of cancer patients, you know, we had a family there. There was a young boy who was going through cancer and he got three hours of, of freedom, you know, yeah. of what he's been going yeah. through. And, and, um, so yeah, it's our experience. We, we really try and articulate that helping these people is a really hot, it's the top of the roller coaster. Yeah. It's an incredible experience to see these people so happy, but the truth is like, it's just clay and myself and we work very, very hard to make these things possible. And we've, seen a lot of failure and we've cried a lot and you know while we have those really highs there's a lot of lows in the in the background and and it's kind of the same way with cancer you know like lexi's going through her own up and down she's playing with these puppies super happy but like the reality is you know she she still has a hole in her chest for where she gets her chemo you know it's like it's uh yeah we're just trying to be honest i think not a lot of people are honest on social media and and we try to be. I don't know if it's if it's a good idea or not, but you know sometimes we say, hey, we feel really sad right now, and and we let you guys down, and it was suckish, but we're gonna try again next week. <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's amazing. That's the way to do it. It's it's something I really connected with. Is uh yeah, you just got people can spot a fake. You got to be real. And listen, that if one kid showed up uh, for the movie, you you made a difference. Like that's all. It, it really would have taken, yeah. would have taken. And then, and it's such an amazing idea. And look, there was a, you forward me the article at comicbook.com. I know you got some other press. Hopefully this gets some momentum. We are going to do what we can to keep tweeting this out and, and, and uh, trying to get their attention. Uh, you guys are doing this full time. You mentioned you dropped out of college. Is this a full time <laughs> gig? This is our full time. So actually um, people help us out on our site. Basically it's, it's like Patreon, but it's on our site. Right. Sure. And, and yeah, people help us out there, but actually, um, we don't use any of that money for ourselves. We use it all for the cancer patients. Wow. And, um, so the other side of it is us just doing freelance stuff to, uh, get this to a level where, where it is a little bit more sustainable. And I think that's part of the honesty factor is this is really, really hard. <laughs> we're full-time YouTubers, which is really a bad career choice, but, <laughs> but we're working really hard. <laughs> Um, you know, yeah, so. you could just get stupid PewDiePie money. Or, you know, they, they, that's the thing. Is they, <laughs> the sponsors will come out for a guy, you know, trashing video games. But when somebody's actually trying to make a difference, it's a little bit of a tougher climb. But you look, you guys just started. Uh, I, it is. It, it, it takes time. And I think you're getting some momentum. 
And this just really spoke to me. Like, what what an amazing, you, you guys seem so young. What an amazing cause. And like I said, I've been affected with cancer too. So this meet any Marvel actor, I'm almost feeling like I want to make it a mission of ours to help you guys. <laughs> to help Lexi meet a Marvel actor. Because I don't think it's really entirely that that out of, you know, it's, it should be attainable, this. Yeah, I mean, really, like when we had met, uh, when we were helping our friend, we had met Danny DeVito, which is a pretty big name. That's crazy. Right? What was he like? He It was very interesting. I love we DeVito. had breakfast with him. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Breakfast with <laughs> and, um, DeVito. Great. Sort of a, a summary is at one point he um, accidentally put hot sauce on his toast instead of jelly, <laughs> <laughs> which kind of summarizes oh the morning. Oh, my God. That's DeVito. It was a very interesting. Yeah. Um, but that became possible because some – really normal person had tweeted at the, the crew or uh, the cast and crew of always sunny. Yeah, yeah. This person didn't have thousands of followers. Huh. I think they had like 200 huh. and they just sent out a tweet, yeah. you know, and it's just a matter of if everybody does that, maybe one person will see it and maybe it'll happen. Same thing. Um, you know, when we had worked, done, got the shout out from the rock, it's because he got tweeted at. And, um, and that's kind of what we're all about. You know, the most common thing we say in our videos is, hey, can you tweet this at this person to make this possible? Because yeah, um, that's a lot. You, you can. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes it just takes that one tweet. And I hope the listener is taking notes and will follow through because that is not hard. That's a, li- a, a little bit of time from a bunch of people. Uh, and all of a sudden, you know, they're, they're, they're going to be like, well, what is this? And, and investigate. Uh, how can mm-hmm. this is amazing? Uh, how can uh, the listeners help? What can we do uh, from our end to help you guys out? Yeah, I think anybody that's listening can go check us out on YouTube, One List, One Life. Right there, you know, going back to the whole tweet idea, people watching this, people being a part of this, this is really a group effort. And just having people there commenting on the videos and, you know, there's been a lot of times that we've wanted to give up and that we're frustrated. But then we get a comment saying, hey, guys, don't give up. And as much as people are inspired by us, we're inspired by them. And YouTube's a good place to kind of get involved with that. You know, if people really want to get involved, they can have, head over to our website. And, and we have some basically um, levels there where they can, you know, contribute monthly and get free T-shirts. And uh, we can become pen pals, that sort of thing. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I mean, I think there's a whole um, whole bunch of different ways to help. It's just a matter of, you know, how much is each individual person willing to give. And at the very least, we'd love to have another subscriber. Wait, there's positive comments on YouTube. You know, it's actually really interesting. Yeah. We get tons. Very, very rarely do we get negative comments. And and usually when we get negative comments, they're usually something like, Hey guys, uh, this video uh, wasn't as good as your other ones. I'd recommend you do this. <laughs> oh, so it's like a okay, just, it, cool. <laughs> constructive criticism. That's uh, that's great. You want that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. People are wonderful, and and we, our community, it's it's incredible what they've done, and you know what they continue to be a part of, and hope, and just yeah, I, I love our viewers. It's magical. <laughs> you know, and you know what, community is important, and I feel the same way. Like uh, this podcast has built a great community, and I hope. Uh, that they 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 take some action and help you guys because like I said everyone has been affected by cancer it doesn't take much to to put a smile on someone's face uh, and I will be making a like a one time donation on behalf of the show and the listeners uh, on your website well, thank you very uh, much because thank uh, you. anything we could do you know we get we we have a Patreon and the listeners are very generous and I've been thinking of a way it's like how can how can we use some of this to help actually help something. And it's it's amazing. It's kind of destiny that you wrote because my thought was like, I want to help. I want to actually do something. Yeah, we make dick jokes and we make jokes about superheroes, <laughs> but I we we have a community and I want to help. And the next my next thought was it would be a cancer related thing because of the fact that it's affected me and my family. Right. And then you guys write in, and I was like, boom! They're, they they these guys are clearly. Uh, are doing good in the world. On a side note, what did you think of Avengers Endgame? You can go full spoilers. Everybody should have seen this goddamn movie you know, by now. It was actually pretty fascinating. I had watched it with with my brother and my friends, and and we were crying walking into the theater because we were so excited. Yeah. And walking out, I was actually not a huge fan the first time. Oh, really? I, I had watched so many theory videos oh, no. See? that mm. as, as plot points were happening, yeah. I said like, oh, oh, this is going to happen. Yeah. And then it didn't happen. Yeah. I watched it the sec. I mean, I cry- I still cried like a oh, baby. Yeah. The entire yeah. <laughs> it, it was still awesome, yeah. but I I wasn't you know I think that I liked Infinity War better. Yeah. 
And then I watched it the second, the third, and the fourth oh, time. Oh, fourth time. And- <laughs> I've only seen it twice. I'm nice. Oh, it gets better. It's so good. See, the and internet. It's just incredible. It's, the, it's, <laughs> it's a little dangerous. Like, yeah, this is great. Anyone can put out a theory video, but it kind of ruins the actual experience because now you're going in with like, it should do this, this, and this, but you don't know what's going to happen. Why don't you just let them tell you the story right. and enjoy the ride? Right. And this movie is a ride. Oh, it definitely is. Every single time that he gets the hammer, yeah. it, it's just, it's, I always, I laugh as much as I cry because it's just such an incredible thing to happen. I couldn't believe I was actually, I'm watching this. This is happening. Somebody actually yeah. made a double page splash page from a comic book come to life. Amazing. I, yeah, I don't even, I've ran out of words. Yes, it is. It, there's, there's no words. It's amazing. I'm, uh, uh, I'm dying to see it another time. Uh, Dylan, thanks for your time, man. And, uh, we're definitely going to try to help uh, promote this, get the word out. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Last time, what's the website the listener can find more information? OneListOneLife.com. Excellent. Thanks so much, listener. You heard it. Click the links in the show notes. There'll be links to the videos and this website. Help make a difference. After these messages, we'll be right back. What's up, everybody? This is Mr. Throwback Thursday from the Mr. Throwback Thursday podcast. Along with my co-host Bill, every Thursday we bring you classic hip hop. Classic, classic. You know all the good stuff, the stuff that you forgot about, the golden age, pre-golden age, back to the original era. For all the pioneers, I'm going way back, way back, way. Each week we bring you hip hop headlines, so we let you know what's going on with your favorite artists from back in the day. We bring you Wu News. We dedicate an entire segment just to the Wu Tang Clan every week. Wu Tang Clan. We bring you two records. One is a one and done. One is a record of the week. We give you an artist of the month. We give you all the classics. Classic. Classic. Come and check us out. Every week we're on iTunes, Stitcher, and at MrThrowbackThursday.com. And if you remember nothing else, always remember, new school stale, old school fresh. Hey, Hooligans, this is Michael. This is Michelle. This is Jeremy. From Who the What Now? The show about... Strange stories from the internet. And Bigfoot came over and beat his ass. <laughs> he like knocked him around a little bit, and he just kind of went limp, and Bigfoot left. Pop culture. John Fodd. Van Clam. John Fodd Van Clam gonna... was supposed to be the alien in Predator. Mm-hmm. And like did like a jump splits, and like ended up with his like, bat right in the dude's face. <laughs> that, that's his like, move. get the part? In our crazy lives. I'm like, oh, there's a cat on my back. And then all of a sudden, I feel something. I feel a furry paw go down my ass crack. <laughs> Just slide right down my ass crack. I was like, what are you doing? You can catch us on all your favorite podcast applications. Spotify. iTunes. Libsyn. iHeartRadio. Stitcher. Your mamas. <laughs> and wherever else you find <laughs> you, They have quality podcasts. <laughs> so don't mess out on the next Who the What Now? Hey, listener, we have an awesome fan club, and you should join it right now. Visit jockandnerd.com slash Patreon. There's a link in the show notes right in your app. Uh, and join. It's called uh, uh, Jock and Nerd Plus. Uh, get Disney <laughs> Plus. Get Apple TV Plus. We got Jock and Nerd Plus premium. Uh, I wouldn't call it premium content. It's bonus I don't know how premium it is. It's just more. Yeah, I don't think it's premium, no, but it it's is more. more. If you like the show and you want more and you you know, you know listen on the day it comes out and you, you're left empty for the rest of the week, join the fan club. You will get exclusive access to a bonus RSS feed that has every show that comes out here, the spinoff show, this show early, and bonus content, whole episodes, instant reactions, uh, extra yeah. stuff that's cut out. Last week, we announced the winner of our uh, April pledge drive that went great. Thank you everyone for supporting. It was Austin Clemens and Austin finally heard the show and wrote in saying, Oh shit. Oh shit. I just listened and found out. Wow. I can't believe it. Heck yes. I'm sitting here shouting jock and nerd. Jock and, nerd. and my cat doesn't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> Thanks again for for all y'all are doing right now. I would have geeked out a lot sooner, but it's been a long week at the office. But this just made it all better. Thanks again, hey, everyone. Hell yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> banana bread at work. But that, hell yeah, bro. Dude, I got some fucking banana bread at work today, dude. Hell yeah. Banana bread, bro. 
That's what that's Austin had the banana bread reaction to winning. So I got in touch with him and he already gave us two movies. Remember? So we're just going to do them both. It was uh, uh, Zombieland and Kung Pao Enter the Fist. Whoa. So we're going to add that on to the Patreon. New to the fan club this week, huge, huge jock and nerd. Jock and nerd. Thank you to friend of the show. He's been on the show. Our buddy Scott Weinstein just became a $5 oh, a month hey. patron. Geek boner. Thank you, Scott. We have a TV producer. Yes, Scott has been listening to us. Scott has been working on Saturday Night Live as a producer for over 20 years. Yeah. And he just, long, long, long time. time, he just wrote a book called Team of Steve's. It's available on Amazon. I will put a link in the oh, yeah. show notes, Check it out. It's awesome. buy it, use our affiliate link. You'll help him out. You'll help us out. And you'll get a great book. Uh, it's a win-win. wonderful tease it's, for next week. Yes. And you may be hearing more. It's going to be great to have him back next week. We have him scheduled to, to hang out. He can talk about his book. And uh, I haven't talked to Scott. I don't think I've talked to Scott since that episode in 2015. Well, I, so, I certainly haven't. Because You're missing out. I am a <laughs> shitty friend. Oh, shit. Remember that? Remember when I used to say that all the time? And the, it's true. It's true. <laughs> I am a shitty friend. So, speaking of bonus content, listener, if you sign up now, there's the kind of shit you get. Instant reactions to every Game of Thrones episode that's remaining this season that came out. And not just one. Rugs and I will record. Anthony recorded with TJ. It's almost two hours of us talking about Game of Thrones and that game. TJ Johnson bonus. from Voice yes. from the Underground. Shout out. Yep. Uh There will also be Chocolate Tane, Tane Reese's Order. His movie review for Waterworld on the Patreon. Tane Reese, your order is ready. Pick it up. Talking nerd. Ready to go. And you just heard my interview, my conversation with Dylan from One List, One Life. Uh, also, you will find an extended interview that has some more stories. You can learn more about them. That's going to be up there as a free clip because I want everybody to check out his awesome uh, charitable website. Check out the videos. Subscribe. And... Listener, you guys, on behalf of the show, on behalf of our Patreon supporters, we have donated $100 to one list, one life. Jock and Nerd! Nice. From the Jock and Nerd, because they're doing some good shit. It's the young kids actually trying to change the world and make kids with cancer's lives better. It's amazing. Help them finish their bucket list. We're going to do what we can to help. Okay. Yeah, we're doing our job. We're doing, everyone's doing our job. Before we get into um, Game of Thrones, yeah. I just want to quickly shout out two things. Um, since it's not in the notes, uh, my spinoff show this past week was with David Taylor the second. Yes. I think it's a really interesting conversation. He is a wordsmith. I mean, he writes children's books, comics, music, songs, yeah. um, all sorts of stuff. He's a really interesting dude, really, um, spiritual dude. So I think that was a really interesting, interesting conversation about race relations and comics and all sorts of things. Um, so I had him on this past week. Hopefully you guys check that out and then. Teasing for next week. Yeah. Uh, Jock Talk is making it back its return Woo-hoo! to the spinoff show with Chaz Hubbard. So I'm going to have Chaz. On. I'm pumped. Yeah, me too. Right on. Yep. Long form Jock Talk. Yeah. That's good. Check out it all. A lot of content on that Patreon. Hey, this is all. Yeah, you get early access to the Jock Talk. <laughs> yes. Or not the. Well, Jock Talk's when they were, we were doing them, but spinoff show, Jock and Nerd Nation. A lot of content in this feed. A lot more content in the Patreon feed. Jockinner.com slash Patreon. Sign up today. Okay, we are returning, continuing with our one week late Game of Thrones Season 8 reviews. This time, Episode 4, The Last of the Starks. Here's the Night King. Hey, everybody. How are you? What's up? (laughs) Vladimir Fudik, the Night King of Game of Thrones here. Now sit back. Relax. And enjoy the joke at Nerd. Game of Thrones season 8, episode 4. Enjoy the last season because this will be one of the best seasons ever. Strap yourselves in, you fucks. Spoiler time. Episode 4, Last of the Starks. Uh, he recorded, what did he, did he re-record every clip or did he just say episode 4, he said episode all, yes, 5? Yes, he said all the episodes and then I cut it up into uh, six clips uh, of him nice. saying every, right? G- really good use of cameo. Thank you. Santa Claus for getting that one. Yes. Uh, the Night King, by the way, he's been tweeting a lot of spoilery shit once he was out of the show. After see episode three, I don't know if you noticed. Because uh, I don't think he gives a fuck anymore. He's done, uh, obviously. Yeah, they can't fire oh, him. What are they going to do, fire him? He's tweeting out all this shit. I don't know if... Maybe he has an NDA that he didn't sign. <laughs> <laughs> he can't sign. He's like, I'm the Night King. I don't sign anything. Uh, Anthony, let's start with you this time. Episode four. 
Uh, this this it starts with them b- burning, mourning. They're dead. There's a party. Uh, stuff happens, and then all the pieces end up at the end uh, for the big show off of former Sarah Connors going for the throne. <laughs> you guys, you guys figured Lena Headey and Amelia Clark both played Sarah Connor. That's right. On different oh. things. Geek and now they're finally going to and terminating each other now. <laughs> uh, what do you think overall of this episode? And what do you think of the direction the show is this season so far? I'm aware there's the sh- these, I think these last two episodes got the lowest scores on Rotten Tomatoes. It's these. been getting divisive. Yeah. Um, personally, I really enjoyed this episode. I thought this was more of a return to form in terms of character work and, um, setting up chess pieces that are going to be really interesting. Um, I enjoyed, you know, seeing the strife that Daenerys has, and I, I can relate to that, or I, I can sympathize with the fact that, you know, she's had this destiny her entire life, and it's just been pulled, the rug's been pulled out from under, and she's desperate she's at this point. She's suffered a lot of loss recently, all of a sudden. Yeah. Loss yeah. after loss yeah, after it's, loss. It's very relatable to be, you know, so you think that you this is your this is your life's dream, and then you realize that, not only is it not your dream, it's someone else has a better claim to it. Yeah, like, yeah I'd be real. Yeah. I'd be really upset about that. Um, but overall, I mean, I, I understand some of the criticism. I do agree that with it being six episodes, things are just moving quick, like almost too quick. Mm-hmm. Like there's not enough time to breathe. Mm-hmm. But I mean, they have six episodes. We still have two left. I'm not a big fan. Like these weekly reviews for me, yeah. especially with Game of Thrones, yeah. is tough because yeah. Game of Thrones is a big picture show. This yeah. is stuff that builds yeah. on yeah. season upon season of character work. So to review these week by week and be like, oh, my God, like this is the worst episode ever. Yeah, oh it's my hard God, to this do. Is the like, yeah, it's hard, it's to, hard do. to do. The yeah. this, this is not complete. So yeah. overall, though, I enjoyed this episode. I thought it was a little bit better of a return to form, especially in comparison to last week. And I'm excited to see what happens in the next one. At the same time, they are kind of like mini movies that you can, you know, a little bit, but I mean, they're building on things yes. like the, a lot of those scenes don't work unless there's eight seasons prior. Sure. Sure. Ruggs, uh, what what did you think of this episode? What stuck out? What was the big, big moment for you? Hmm. I mean, this is a, a chess piece type of a episode where they are moving pieces on the board. Like Anthony said, they are positioning things. They're maneuvering things. The biggest things that you see here is Sansa pretty much setting up these uh, things to fall later. Yep. So she... She can't keep a secret on purpose. She did that on purpose. Well, absolutely on purpose. on purpose. She did that on purpose. Like, she told the person that she knew that was going was gonna to... going to run and tell Varys. Kind of put all this stuff in motion yeah. um, that was going to actually force the hand and create this scenario that Daenerys is fearing. Um, and uh of course uh Jon Snow he should have kept his mouth shut, but he didn't. Well, but you know, and, like I don't know his character. Yeah, I don't yes. know why Daenerys would think that he would. She asked him, he, you know, please don't tell anyone you're Aegon Targaryen. The truth is gonna destroy us. But she but they knows could rule together and they the thing is they could easily rule together, but they're yes. writing it so they can't do it. And that's what frustrates me because like they could easily solve this problem. Like they both have a claim to the throne. They both yeah. want to be together. They can be. And why is it got to be one person? And uh, they can totally rule together. Well, I think the reason I'll try to explain it. Yeah. And, you know, you you can disagree with it. Um, I think what they're getting at is that if they ruled together, everyone would still just accept John because John has grown up in Westeros. He, the people love him. He has actually the stronger claim to the throne. The North whereas, loves him. Right. Whereas Danny is a foreigner, basically. Yeah. She's grown up in Essos. She's come over here and said this is her birthright, yeah. but she's come over with a foreign army. She's a woman. They, they very much emphasize that it's a man that would get more support. So I think that's where they're going with that. Even if they were to co-rule, it would be John's rule, and Danny's ego can't handle that. Right. I love seeing Daenerys like we weren't sure they're going to mad queen her. But in this episode specifically, you slowly see her getting more and more agitated. And then at the end, it's straight up rage. I love in the beginning. Well, first of all, she she makes Gendry the lord of what is it? Storm's End. Yeah, she plays her her biggest chess piece right off the bat. It's amazing. It's forgotten right right away. It's like he's like, I'm a bastard. She's like, no, you're a lord because I fucking told you who you are. 
and uh, great move on her end. He's going to be loyal to her. And then uh, I love the moment where Gendry's like, goes to Arya, of course. I want you to be my queen. I got this. And she's like, I'm not a lady. I was never going to be a lady. I'm sorry. And I just felt bad. She just wanted that Gendry D. And then now she's moving on. <laughs> uh, and then, But then you see the, the free folk. Uh, a Tormund going, uh, John, you're a fucking king riding that dragon. Did you see him up there? And everyone is celebrating him. And then you see her getting mad. Like I heard, you know, Marge Simpson's grumble on the Simpsons. Like I almost heard her going. Yeah. <laughs> it it has mad. to be the free folk to do that because that's bad form. Anybody who's from Winterfell. Right. They, they don't do know that. the etiquette. Yeah. So it has to be the free folk. I don't know why Daenerys doesn't go like they're free folk. They don't know any better. Yeah, why like, does she give really a fuck? Of, she should, they're, not, they're not even going to be in under my rules. So let yeah, them get she should have been like, here. oh, that's cute. They don't know what they're yeah. talking about. But no, I love these little things. And then by the end of the episode, she loses her fucking uh, a closest advisor. And she's down a goddamn dragon. And I have a lot of issues with the last 20 minutes of this episode. Because while the beginning of it was great Game of Thrones, great side conversations, Tyrion and Varys having that conversation where Tyrion's like, I'm, you know, I'm behind Daenerys, and Varys is pretty much, bitch, I don't trust that, I don't trust that girl, I don't trust that girl, bro. Well, even Tyrion's a little like, Ugh, now he's on the edge. Uh, I want to when we get before we get to that twenty minutes, yeah. I want to just say that Sansa told him that, but you have to just keep in mind, Sansa. Remember that she goes, the Hound goes, you know, you could have could have escaped all that if you would have just came with me and she's like but this is what made me basically who i yes, am yes yeah and a big part of who she is is that she learned from Littlefinger. oh yeah she learned how to maneuver I, I'm, manipulate I'm very people. much enjoying her character this year this season and that's not something i could have said no the past six or seven the, seasons. you know a person a character who's been a victim the whole time and you just you're like oh fucking sansa one thing of a she when she when Littlefinger like took her you could see her learning things from him and and yeah the thing is it's like she's she was like a bitch like, how do I use the knife in the other episode? Uh, yeah, like you stab- what do I do with this? She's like, B-b-b-. well, I'm like, they they, they, they inconsistently stick write with her. The point That's what I'm saying. Mm. Yeah, like they they should have like not written that that line. Like she knows weird. how to use it. It's a fucking knife. Like how dumb? Yeah. It's like you're not that dumb. Uh, <laughs> so they sometimes they write her like this fucking mastermind badass, and then they write her like a bitch. Like, she doesn't know how to use a knife. It's like, it just, it's consistent. The line was a callback to the first episode where John gave Arya a needle. He said the same thing to, to Arya. Yeah. He's like, yeah, it was, it was a mishandled callback. I'll agree with that. But a little bit. Yeah. Wrong uh, person to be like, I don't want to use a knife. It's <laughs> the wrong time. It's right. the wrong time. Now you're yeah, asking. Wrong time, right, right. Could have thought like, of if it. she pulls the knife out, like, when she pulled the knife out to, like, protect Tyrion, yeah. that's kind of badass, even though people didn't know what that was going on in that scene, but like so now, anyway, we're, we're past that, and now uh, she's really like the ultimate badass. What, uh, Anthony? What'd you think of the whole Jamie Brienne hooking up situation? I, mean, I thought it was fine. Like that, they've been building towards this this entire time. I mean, it's been this un you know unspoken love that they've had. So I thought it was perfectly fine. It was well within their characters. I have to admit, and this is just me being a little bit. Um, I don't even know what the word is. I'm not attracted to Brienne. Yeah. So when she was starting to take off her clothes, I was in a room at a watch party, and me and a few guys were like, "Oh no, please, no, don't, don't show this either." Dude, we had we had literally had the same reaction that when Arya started taking off her clothes. Wendell and Christie is actually. I saw an interview with her where she was sitting next to another uh, cast member, but she had her hair down, she had lipstick on, and I was like, I didn't recognize her. I was like, Wait, who the fuck is that? And I was like, holy shit, that's Brienne. She's beautiful. Uh, she's actually very attractive. I don't know. I just the She's play, been played up as like the big yes. like tomboy big sister yes. type. Is the big woman around. Right. <laughs> Perfect for Tormund, who's never going to get to hit that now. But is that not a definition of a fuckboy, Anthony? The way he left her ugly crying outside in a robe uh, at the end of that scene. I, I think that was like, so a lot of people, I saw some stuff on it. And man, the internet is just crazy. It ter- people, certainly people, is. People, People were like, "Oh, like that's such a they 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 ruined Brienne. She's this uh, yeah. now. She's just this crying bitch. Like, and she's just so- sobbing over this dude. I'm like, I didn't look at it like that. And I just looked at it like Jamie is gonna go back to King's Landing, and I think he's gonna fucking try to kill Cersei. Yeah. Well, so that's- which way? I wasn't sure. Is he going back to be with her, or is he going back to be the Queen Slayer? I, that's what I think. Yeah. I think he's gonna go back, and I think that's the way they're writing it. Is that they he's gonna go back to at least attempt." 
to be an honorable person and stop this war because by killing the queen. He at that moment he hears what happened. You don't really know though. You, you don't yeah, know. Could yeah, happen. Yeah. That's why I say you gotta you gotta let this stuff play out. You gotta out. let it yeah. play out. But uh, I did love that line where she's like, "You're a good person," and he's like, "Am I really?" There's yeah, all the horrible shit all things, I did. Yeah. I'm not really a good person. And she kind of, I feel like she kind of wanted to save him, and uh, and he he just wasn't didn't want to get close. I don't know. I'm glad uh, he got to pop her cherry. I guess. I don't know. Oh, I think I think him. it's her. it's too obvious. So I think it's too obvious if he goes back and he just goes back to her like that's just too obvious yeah. i also think it's too obvious that well you would undo Dan- his whole character arc if he goes back right. to cersei and i think they've, they've been building up to danny being the mad queen and i think that's too obvious too i think she, they're gonna swerve us at the end and she's mm. gonna have a like a moment of epiphany where like i'm becoming like my ancestors so i need to break the wheel i don't think that i don't think he ever makes it back to king's landing oh she, yeah rugs doesn't think he even makes it back there no, I think Arya is gonna kill him. I heard, I've heard it. that, and uh, take his face, and then get in there and kill Cersei. How would you feel about that? Well, she's on his list. Jamie is. Yeah, he's on his I list. I think there's it's only on three people left on this list. I don't think Jamie is. We'd have to look that up. Cersei he, and the Mountain she, she definitely is. Cersei she doesn't the... want to kill the guy who threw her brother out a window. Why, yeah, I don't why think wouldn't so? She? Really? I think it was Cer- the three last three people, and I might be wrong. Yeah. It was Cersei. Yeah. Uh, Ilan Payne, who chopped Ned's head off in the mountain. Ilan Payne is still alive? I don't know if Ilan Payne is still alive. Mm. I don't know what the hell, Where is the hell he? happened to Ilan Payne. What's he doing? I don't think he's on the list. I've heard that rumor that she's going to kill Jamie and, and become put his face Jamie. on. That'll be- I, just, I just don't see, like, what's the payoff to her killing Jamie? Like, I don't, other than, like, her, it, then he just becomes someone that's used. Well, and they never had a thing. Like, they never interacted. It, it, yeah, there's. It, it would be so. It wouldn't make any sense. Well, she wants to kill Cersei. Yeah. Right. So she has to do that by any means, maybe. Oh, I don't maybe. Know. I just, just. But those mm. characters have just never. There's no build up to her and right. conflict between those right. two. They don't really have a beef aside but from him. I mean, maybe she doesn't kill Jamie. Maybe she. Well, does she have to kill him to assume his face? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I think, good... you, I think you have to kill him. Oh. The only, but there wasn't a ton of build up to Arya killing the Night King, and they did that. Yeah. That shit came out of nowhere, Michael Jordan style. Uh, so some of the distances and times was a little confusing because while the whole Don't f- think about fleet it. made it there. So still, though, on the road to King's Landing from Winterfell, you have Davos and John who left first. Then you have Arya and the Hound who left later. And then you got Jamie by himself also on the fucking road heading the same way. Just seems weird. Like I thought they they were gonna would get there first before. The, there is really no good perception of distance or time in this universe because I've heard that Westeros is as big as South America. Oh, that Which, big? I thought it was more like that. like uh, England. But the I've UK. also heard it's England. Yes, because yes, I don't know. It looks a lot like Europe, like England, and then off to the the, the, the east. latest thing I read on the Ringer, which does a uh, weekly stuff on yeah. Game of Thrones, yeah. is that they said it was supposed to be as big as South America. South of holy shit! Well, now you're just fucking changing things. Yeah, <laughs> I bet there, there is really. I mean, they do a really bad job of telling you what the passage of time and distance is. Yeah, and there's six episodes, and they got to fucking get there so we can fucking yeah. move some plot around. All right, so look, my biggest issue with this episode and kind of this whole eighth season is that it seems to be missing a lot of the the nuance that the first six seasons had, and maybe because they're out of book and they got to wrap this up. While the, I love the beginning of this episode, the, all the conversations, the last 20 minutes seem to be a lot of stupid decisions made by characters that I just did not understand what the fuck was going on. And this show has never given me a scene where I'm like, what? What? What just happened there? Why did she do that? Usually. Example. Give me an example. Okay. In this, there's a lot of examples. You're telling me you got dragons and you have no idea what, it, what that you're fl- flying into an ambush. You wouldn't go ahead and check. Like, it's obvious you're going to be ambushed. This dragon, the magical Night King with his magical staff took one dragon down. But now fucking Euron Greyjoy, which is plain old giant scorpion spears, is t- is hitting this dragon twice. Like, how he can aim it twice. And then, and well, then. Let me, can I rebu- yes. rebuttal that? Okay. I, I agree. Like, that her being on a dragon and not being able to see that being ambushed while she's who knows how high in the air is, is, is kind of bad writing. Um, but. They have had a ton of time. Okay, we don't know how much time, but it seems like they've had a ton of time to build these dragon slaying arrows. Um, the scorpions are bigger. The scorpions, the scorpions are more. way bigger. They yeah. have a lot more. So 
they've known about dragons for a while and they've been prepping for a long time. So yeah, it might be difficult and I, I'll give you that. It might be difficult to hit a moving thing in the sky, but they have been prepping for a long time. Right. To okay. So the, the only yeah. thing that I, that I would just throw in there is that this happens as they're about to get to Dragonstone. That's where the ambush would be. Right. So you would think that they would be a little bit more. I mean, these are dragons. They, they fly and hunt. That's what they do. Right. That they would actually see something. But Okay, they have the element of surprise. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll give them that. I'll okay, them. second question. After that happens, Danny is pissed because her dragon just went down. She proceeds to fly straight at the fleet of Euron Greyjoy, at which point they all shoot at her. And miss. And miss. <laughs> Conveniently, she doesn't dracarse them. She just turns around and flies away. I was like, oh, what, 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 what are you doing? What is this? Yeah. Very they, they, All of a sudden... They all of a sudden shoot like uh like people in in, in all these uh and then they des- they destroy the fleet W shows yes they yes miss. what is this arrow yeah what is this arrow Stephen Amell's arrow rules yeah and then Daenerys is there with a small like there's like fifty troops standing there and Tyrion goes to reason with Cersei which I don't understand why anybody thinks they can still reason now, with Cersei the scene prior yes. the boat and the dragons were fucking really far away from each other and they're able to the wing it while flying now they have the height advantage and the dragon is on the ground The dragon is in the background afraid closer than it was in the sky and before not, and, and they don't shoot it look, <laughs> cersei's been trying to kill Tyrion this whole time he was right there the, the danny was right there she could have killed them all right there yeah i, I agree the, the only thing i can think of is i i think back to when um john snow and ramsey met back in uh like season six yeah and they discuss the, the yeah they yes. discuss the terms of work. Let's have a so parlay. the only thing I can think of, and by no means do I think Cersei is that diplomatic, but I think she's a conniving bitch. And yeah. if she had it, if that if she was written correctly, she probably would have taken out Danny right then on the spot. Yeah. The yeah. only thing I can explain it is there's rules of war, ah. and this is this is what they. It's not follow. a yeah. We're we're gonna you're gonna get a chance to prepare. There, there is there is no there it, when you're that high of a level. There's no guerrilla warfare. You you. If you if you're duking it out fairly, you you talk about the terms of engagement. You give someone a okay, chance to surrender, okay, I can, and then you go out in an open battle. I can kind of buy that because they had the higher ground, they had the advantage. There is precedent for this, so they need to line up, square up, even, and then go. Right, well, I can that's see what that. Ramsey and John did. Yeah. And John was like, "Let's do it one on one." He's like, "Get the fuck out of here! Like, we're, doing not... it. we're doing it tomorrow yes. on the battlefield. We're doing it the correct way." But it gave that awesome scene of Masende's death. Where she, I mean, Tyrion. Did you see how the internet was uproared about that? Uh, why? They're like, you sacrificed a person of the color, person of color yes. to prop up a, a Caucasian woman. <laughs> it's fucking Westeros. I don't know. That's how they roll. I, I was just like, Grey Worm's this, still around. Uh, yeah, I was just like, it, what? This is like, <laughs> it, it's, if anything, that's. It's her friend. It's, yeah, it's that's her friend. Why it's just yes. her friend. It's it doesn't matter that she's a person of color. Yes. <laughs> just happen. It's fantasy, people. It's just fantasy. They're like, you killed another person of color who happens to be also be a woman to prop up another character. I'm like, Listen, that's not it. Just, this is just opportunistic rage. They're like, they're friends. Yeah. They're friends. And they're she's like, killed by a woman. So this this enhances the rivalry yeah. between these two. I love with the, her last words being Dracarys as, as if just telling Daenerys, like, burn all this shit burn down. Burn the fucking Walk shit take down. Him down. And, that look, Daenerys, the last shot of her walking towards the camera. Oh, it's great. Oh, my God. The great, rage. Great acting, you just yeah. see it building and building. You know who else was uh, did some great acting this episode? A fucking coffee cup. Oh, shit. Uh, in, in the scene, uh, did you catch oh, that? Oh, the yeah. fucking coffee cup? That is unbelievable. So, look, this is a big show. I did not catch it live, but that is... No, don't don't defend that. There's been a that is unbelievable. <laughs> this show, I have an article here. There's been a bunch of goofs on the show. There's times where a power cord was showing. There's one scene in uh, Battle of the Bastards where John jumps on his horse, and you can see his his sword is completely rubber wobbling around, like stuff like yeah, that I've happens. Seen that. Yeah, but okay. but and they've taken they've taken out the cup digitally now. But I can't believe everyone missed that. Even more shocking, what Weiss and Benioff. We're in that scene playing free folk. They were standing right there where that fucking cup. Oh, shit. They were in the scene and missed it also. Now, you know Westeros is gentrified when there's a Starbucks in the crib. 
And I, I'm imagining. I heard it was just like a, a craft. Uh, it was. It was craft services. But it would be nice. Next episode, you see some hipsters and strollers in the background. It, like they're whatever, moving into it, the it looks like a. I mean, it's a coffee cup, 100%. Right. And, it, and it looks close enough yeah. to a Starbucks yeah. coffee. Yeah. It's just I mean, That was unbelievable. Sleep, but I, was I didn't like, believe it. Yes. But like uh, Amelia Clark is facing that direction. Like, you don't think she'd be like, was that, was that a take? Were you filming that? This fucking cup's right here. Uh, do I we mean, need to redo it, this? Shit happens. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's one of those things where it just it's it's funny that it made it all the way past. You can see airplanes sometimes. Yeah, if they don't yeah. catch it. Yeah, right? if you're watching Gladiator, there's a plane in the also, air. Also, in their happen. in their defense, I will say I watched the behind the scenes about that 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 dinner scene, and they did that live with all these people choreographing cameras. There was a lot of moving parts, a lot of extras, a lot of shit going on. They missed a fucking cup. Uh, fucking happens. They, I, I will give you this, Simran, because yeah. you pointed out a yeah. lot of I, and I think I said it earlier, but I agree. Like, I think this season could have used eight or ten episodes. I think. I, I yeah, think they're moving. It's moving they just, a little too fast. There's too much pressure to move mm-hmm. through this stuff too quickly. They're not letting enough of the, enough, no. enough of this stuff breathe, and they're not mm-hmm. thinking through some of these decisions. It feels rushed. It feels yes. a little rushed. Like they needed Daenerys and Tyrion to get to like the King's Night Landing. King dying yeah. was rushed. Yeah. Uh, this now. Hurtling towards Cersei is now rushed. Uh, you know, we're now. I mean, look, it, the, they're they're like kind of chopping down everything, <laughs> so like the battle is more even. I guess I don't know. My friends pointed out, and I and I disagreed at first, but I was like, they might be right. That scene where John tells, um, Arya and uh, Sansa that he's well, he makes Bran. He makes Bran tell him. Well, he makes Bran tell him. Mm-hmm. So he technically didn't we, tell him. We probably should have seen that happen. Ah, right. That, it would we have been a great, have, yes, because we probably should have got their live reactions yeah. to that, and some like and some back and forth, like wait, what? Like some discussion, but we didn't. They cut to that. They cut that because there's not enough time. Not enough time. Listen, yeah. they've done this several times. That is a great point. I would have loved to see that. The other time that they did this, that really got to me. Remember before Battle of Winterfell, Tyrion asked Bran to tell him everything he knows, and he's like, "I have a lot of time," and I wanted to hear that conversation. No, they cut away. What was that conversation? Does Tyrion know everything because of what he was talking well, to Bran? Th- that I think was a little more strategic because I think he Tyrion might come back later with knowledge that we're like, oh shit, he told him that. Yeah, yeah. But I, I do think the Stark's reaction, the closest Stark family member's reaction to him being a Targaryen, that, should have been yeah. shown. And I, I kind of love that whole moment after the meeting where Arya's like, "John, we need a word," because <laughs> they go and we're like, "We're the last of the Starks. What are you doing?" Uh, and then he makes brand, but I I wanted I would have loved to see their reaction. Let me ask you guys this: I asked TJ a philosophical question yeah. based on John. What's what's more noble, John, who can absolutely never tell a lie <laughs> to a fault, yeah, to a fault, but he can never tell a lie, which is a noble thing, yeah, or Ned who kept a lie, kept a lie from John this entire time. He was really good at him. keeping secrets, right? No, he wasn't great at keeping secrets, but he kept that one. He kept the one. The one mm. that he knew was... I mean, mm. look, the truth is not a pretty thing. And if you tell the truth, a lot of times you're going to get in trouble. Is it more mm-hmm. noble to keep a promise, though, or to tell the truth? I mean, look, there's people right now who tell the truth, and they're called all kinds of names because they're saying things that people don't want to hear. It's mm-hmm. And it's similar to people on their deathbed that have been through big shit Maybe like, you know, like the JFK assassination, other things and revealing things in their final moments of life. But even in Ned's final moments, though, he never revealed. No, it. he did. And he, he I mean, yeah, he's like the next time we meet, we'll talk. I'll talk about your mother. Like he maybe he was going to tell him. But ah, what is I think John? I mean, they're both. It's a it's a, it's a question that there's no right answer. No, to. and I think John's fucking pure honesty. I think everything's got conditions. is can be yeah. really uh, have problems. <laughs> it can the be way, the way um, TJ answered that, he's like, I think it's John, just because he could never lie to family. And he's and TJ was saying, I could never lie to my wife mm-hmm. about anything. Like even if it's something that might hurt, even someone if else, it would I can't destroy be a lie. her or hurt someone else. Right. It's mm. just the the fact of lying. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. Yeah, but if you yeah. do something fucked up, and when they tell the truth about it, it doesn't make you noble. So yeah. it's like, yeah, I uh, I killed a guy. <laughs> do you come clean and ask <laughs> well, for forgiveness? Like, does that yeah, does I that make up for it? 
I don't know. Yeah. I was just thinking about the John's character. Yeah. I'm like, man, that motherfucker can but never. That, that's ever your. Tell uh, a lie. That's your like major like major religions conundrum. Like a lot of them are like, look, if you do bad shit and you just ask forgiveness, you're fine. So what? I can go around murdering people and just ask for absolution, and now I'm a good person. I mean, not to that, not to that extreme, no? Ron. But but you I'm are looking I mean, yes, for a loophole. Yes, if you repent. Uh, yes. If you were, if you own your your sins, you you are a much more considered mm-hmm. a much better person than someone that does. Yeah, but you still did the thing. I don't know. Right. Uh-huh. Well, listen, you got to have some kind of way to redeem yourself. Yeah. You make mistakes. Yeah. It depends on how big that mistake is and whether you meant to do it or uh, whether you've learned from that and you realize you're an idiot and you hate that part of you that did that shit. And I mean, so, I think, will we get a, another a, like a concrete redemption for Jamie Lannister before he dies? Really? I mean, we've already gotten a little bit yeah, of it because yeah, he yeah. rode north by himself, yep, right? Yep, yep. And he fought. Yep. He fought alongside the Starks against an army that no. He never one... got to really see it, but yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but you never, you know, at least he got to do it. <laughs> saw some of you, it. You saw some of it, and the fact that, um, you know, he was fighting aside, alongside the family that he ruined. And I, I love Theon's redemption was great. It's still sad. Like I wish. They had a moment to tell him, like, you're a Stark. And, you know, Did you I'm, see uh, his Wikipedia, Alfie Allen? No. For a short time, it was like, blah, 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 blah. Also played Theon Greyjoy. Theon is a good man. Aw, <laughs> Theon, you're a good man, Theon. It was written in his, in his bio. And again, is Bran ever going to fucking do anything in any of these episodes ever again? What? No. What are they? What is he doing? What is his point place in all this now? I think they've got stuff planned for. Brandon. Or was that it? Was him? Was he just there to spill the beans on the Targaryen? You know what family? it seems like, and I've read this somewhere, but it seems like now that they've gotten away from the books, yeah, the 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 writers Weiss and Benahoff, yeah, right, yeah, are really trying to distance themselves from the fantastical elements of Game of Thrones, yeah. and they're really trying to focus on the the practical stuff, like the 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 human relationships, like. They resolve the Night King stuff, yeah. and they put Bran in the background, and the dra- like. They're getting I rid of the see. dragons. Yes. Like they're like, let's get rid of all this fantasy stuff. Get let's back just make this about the throne. Pure Game of Thrones. Well, they're making all the magic go away. Right. That's the end of the magic. Uh, so, and then also, there's stuff about Amelia Clark going episode five. And there's something crazy Huge, that happens. Yeah. Big watch it on the biggest TV you have. And you know what? I saw another thing, Rugs. We were talking about this in our Patreon. Could there be more dragon eggs? Or is that really the last dragon? <laughs> Is Drogo maybe not a male and maybe gives birth to eggs? I don't know. They could definitely use some more dragons because I think Rhaegal is actually he's dead, dead. Like definitely. Do you, do dead. you guys think we are? Uh, we're not. We're, we saw the last of Tormund, Giant Spain, and Samwell. I don't know. It seemed like we wouldn't see them again. They're going north. They don't want to have they anything said, to do ah, with yeah. this. And they took Ghost, who was amazing, and Ghost survived, and the fucking dragons didn't. He's got one ear bitten off. Johnny just doesn't. Doesn't want a pet ghost before he goes. Well, it cost uh, apparently it cost too much money, and then they yeah. spun it as like we thought this was more powerful. When really it was like, yeah, that's kind of expensive to have him interact with the CGI fucking wolf. We've already got dragons and all this shit. <laughs> He's just gonna look at him from afar and go, "Peace out, bro." You're it going like, with Tormund. Seemed like this was the end for those guys, right? Characters. And Gilly and That'd Sam. Be sad. They couldn't get like a Samoyed that he could pet from the back. That's all, that yeah. Tell. You got a yeah. dog like Roma. I got a Samoyed. Yeah. I got, you could have yeah. used my epileptic blind cataract diabetic <laughs> dog. It's a, it's a, a small double. thing, but I would have. I definitely would have thought within John's character, he'd be a little more emotional. A little nuzzle dog. or something would have been nice. Uh, yeah, but uh, sir, look, I kind of like how Cersei, Daenerys, and Sansa, to some extent, they're all kind of becoming the same person. They're all women who don't like people questioning their authority. They want to rule. They've done bad shit. I don't know. I don't very think Sansa wants to rule, but no. she's very distrusting. Yes. She realizes that she can. Yes. And she might be the best person to do it because she feels like everybody else is compromised. I saw another graphic, Vegas Odds. It still has Bran, number one, Sansa, number two, <laughs> to end up on the throne, according to Vegas. Well, where so. do you think it's going? Where do you guys... What you guys think? I mean, this is the, the it's always the penultimate I'm still episode. In, I'm in the I'm in the tank for Sansa because now they could be doing a swerve. They could be making it look like like what happens is sometimes if you're a really good writer, you drop things that make it look like this is happening, right. but you're not being too obvious about right. it. But to somebody who's savvy, might say, "Okay, I'm seeing the the, the tea leaves here that they're setting up Sansa to be this this leader." Um, she's nowhere near where the shit's going to go down. Yep. 
Right? She's staying at Winterfell. Yeah, yeah she stayed so, there. Uh, if they all kill each other, exactly, then she can roll in and take it. And I think hmm. she kind of yeah. is thinking that, like, it wouldn't be a, a terrible idea. I, so I, have, yeah. I have no, I, I have no idea, Sansa. No idea. I'm still, I don't know where this is gonna go. I asked TJ this, and I asked you guys. We're four episodes in, two left. Yeah. Is it any way possible for them to stick the landing? Granted, knowing that everyone in their in the world is watching this and has their own expectation for how this should go. As every week has gone by, I have become and the, the feedback's been like negative. Now these I past have two become weeks. Incre- incrementally less confident that they are going to stick this landing. As the weeks have been going, I feel like the same way because unless they do something fucking crazy in these last two episodes, but how, you only have so much time. But then, I like, mean, no, go ahead. Like uh, it's one of those things where you have to accept the moves that they're making. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, like kind of like we did with when we watched Endgame. Like we knew that they were making moves that we don't agree with, but we had to go with it because it was giving us what we wanted. Mm-hmm. Here, like they're making moves, but we're not accepting. Like we're not getting the payoff that we want. It's not so it's, satisfying. It's, there's a conflict. You can, there's, a, there's a conflict. You can there. do these big swerves, but ultimately, just like Endgame, this needs to be satisfying. You have there needs to be some kind of satisfying feeling, some closure. Well, that's a thing. That's a thing, though. Is you you say satisfying? I don't know what that, that is, I, though. I'm agreeing with you guys. Yeah. I and I'm slowly getting convinced that I don't think it's possible for them to stick the landing. But you mentioned satisfying. Like, mm. what's satisfying for you is going to be satisfying for. Joe yeah, over there yeah, that's watching yeah, this in yeah, Idaho. You yeah. know, like, I don't think, I mean, you know, especially with the structure of it being six episodes, yeah. I, don't, I just don't think they have a, they're, they're not going to be able to please everybody, I don't think. Well, I think about Lost. Okay. All right. Did you ever watch Lost? I didn't watch Lost, but I know that no one was happy with that. Anyway, all right, right. Yeah. Well, basically, we all saw it fall apart mm-hmm. at, at, as it was coming to an end. And then basically, what we knew, the, what it was the whole time the end they were they were denying ended up being the ending and it was so rushed and it was so like not satisfying that that made me hate that show like i don't even want to ever even talk about it again like as far as watching it and how i was like how could they just ruin something that w- that had so much potential um are you seeing I don't similarities think it's gonna, no okay. i don't see it as not as bad okay i don't think it's going to make me feel like i hate this show because i don't i think it's uh, it's still this on such a high level went all the way till the end mm-hmm. and there's no twist. I don't think that's like where this show is not what you thought it was the whole time. So that's like the ultimate failure where you're like, think the show is one thing. And then all of a sudden they tell you this, it's this mundane thing that, that, that it's not. Listen, mm-hmm. HBO has been in this exact spot before during the, the Sopranos, final yeah. season of the Sopranos. Another same thing. How do you, Nail the ending. I look back on Sopranos like fondly, though. Even though that ending was fucked up, I really think there's no way to end that show. I think David Chase, is, it was kind of a brilliant way because, like you just said, Anthony, you're not going to be able to satisfy all tastes. What did Chase do? Here's the end. Cut to black. It ends however you want. You right. feel it. Like, there's really, endings are hard. There was really no other way you were going to end Sopranos and Tony Soprano's journey well, that listen, was going like, to please everyone. Battlestar Galactica did the same thing. Battlestar Galactica ended the series with this very controversial ending, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you either had to be on board with it or you didn't. And, uh, you know, years later, I was kind of, like, perturbed by it. And now, like, I, I, I accept it because it's... So if this ends up being like that, where it's like, okay, they 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 rushed the ending a little bit. They they It wasn't as satisfying as it could be, but they really tried to give everybody a good end, mm-hmm. a good character end or whatever, then we might, might not be a, reach the expectations that we have, but it'll still be good. And then we'll still be able to look back on this as like pretty much the best series ever. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think it's going to fall short of that. Uh, like Lost did. Like Lost like completely no, lost shit the bed. undid any, yeah, kind, any, yeah. any kind of good yeah. feelings that I had about it. I don't think it's possible... For Game of Thrones it's to be under that much, it'll just be like a little short of what we want. I, hmm. I could see that. Short of the, the, the thing that I can say that will de- that I'm defending Game of Thrones on is, I agree they're rushing stuff and yeah. some of the payoffs to these things aren't what we're expecting. Yeah. But my confidence in Game of Thrones to at least 
provide an ending that I'm like, okay, that's good enough, is the fact that I still think most of the characters on the show are acting the way they should be acting. They are. Yes. Yeah. Like, no one's being written in a way where I go, who is this person? Right. Well, they would you never know, not, do not that. Not too much, yeah. at least. Well, it's just an uneven here and there. But it like, is it's uneven not, this season. Definitely It's not uneven. bad. It's not... It, look, the criticism that we're giving it is is due, but if you put it in the grand scheme of things, it's actually doing very well. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's fair. All right. Okay. So, like, is it to what we expect? Because they've truncated the season. Right. They've made these into, like, longer episodes. There's not enough room to kind of let it breathe. So you, things feel rushed and you feel like the payoffs are a little bit, you know, kind of like empty. Um, but they are doing right by the characters. Like Anthony said, they are resolving the story in a way that at least makes sense. It just doesn't make sense. Like, uh, pacing one, right? It's we, just happening right. too we fast, have but enjoyed it, it a little bit. Like more. if you just say, okay, this is what happened. If you're explaining it to somebody fact by fact, makes okay. Sense. So they went and they fought the these guys. They killed the Night King, and then they went to Cersei. Like that, all this stuff. Like if you're describing it plot by plot point, makes sense. Bullet point by bullet point makes sense. It's just the span the the spans of time and what transpires in the span of time feels like it's it's just compressed so much. Yeah, I saw this article. This like military specialist dude like completely picked apart the battle Battle of Winterfell and pointed out how it was just dumb. Like all their ideas, I don't think yeah, he was like I mean, a historian, I, but I thought you know, was, I mean you yeah. can you can do that. You can, get, you can have a scientist on for any movie in space, and you'll pick. Yeah, Neil up. deGrasse Tyson does that for every fucking uh, sci-fi right. movie. He's like, no, yeah, that doesn't mean no. it. Yeah. Uh, last note before we wrap this up: uh, Richard Madden, who played Rob Stark in the first season, in talks to play Icarus in the Eternals movie. Oh. Shit. For the MCU, possibly joining Angelina Jolie and Kumail Nanjani. I don't know who Icarus is. Icarus is like the main dude, right, Ruggs? Yeah. Uh, he looks like he's a, I don't know, he's got a blue suit. He's a blonde, blonde dude, dude with, uh, with uh, long hair, long blonde hair. It doesn't really look like the guy that they cast, but probably going to do something different with him. He's an All immortal. I know is about the legend of Icarus and flying too close to the sun. Uh, yeah, I wonder if it's part of that. But uh, or if it's no, he's like a very powerful like Superman cosmic. Well, look, <laughs> we're all gonna learn about these Eternals uh, when Marvel. He's basically like Captain Marvel. Was... In the oh, okay. He's the Eternals version of Captain Marvel. Hmm. Uh, good stuff. Two shows left: Sarah Connor versus Sarah Connor. Which Sarah Connor will win, or will neither of them? How do you think? Do you think Cersei's gonna lose? Or I, gonna I, lose? I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'll tell you who I don't want on the throne I is Cersei. Like, Maybe I feel like I that, know. like. I don't know. For Sansa to not be the the person on the throne, like Cersei has to win. Because she, someone has to go and take out Winterfell, right? <laughs> Who's going to do that? I, I think, I don't think Cersei wins. It's it's too big of a good a moment to have someone kill her to not do oh, it. Oh, yeah, we're all waiting for that. And, I mean, it, and, and having either Arya or Jamie, either one of them kill her would be so satisfying. So you think it's going to be Arya or Jamie? Yeah. Is Clegane Bowl actually going to happen? Or are they going to rush so through that? Do you think that there's any other scenarios where it's not Arya or Jamie that kills Cersei? I, I do, do think, think it's Tyrion. I do think Clegane, oh, Clegane Bowl will happen, and you're right, Tyrion is a third option. I didn't, I didn't, I forgot about Tyrion. Hmm. But I think it's more the payoff to the story. It makes Arya more sense Jamie. for Arya or Jamie, especially Jamie. Like it makes a ton of sense if Jamie kills her because she is sacrificing all the innocence to let the mad queen Daenerys try to get into the King's Landing. And she's like, this ends if I just kill my sister and the war stops right now. Mm. Good stuff on Game of Thrones. Let's get to news from the nation. It's time for news from the nation. It's time for news from the nation. <laughs> Is it over yet? That sounded like a wet one. Oh, no, there's more. All right, get it out. All right, good. Good stuff. <laughs> it's still going? Okay. I don't know why it's funny. <laughs> Listen, fart noises will never be funny. Not funny. Never not funny, yeah. Ball to the groin and fart noises, never not funny. That's solid. Ball to the groin? Ball to the groin, always funny. 
You mean like hitting someone in the balls? No, like a ball hitting you in the groin. Like oh, a sports right, right, right. ball. Sure. Or anyone just getting hit in the balls. Oh, yeah. Anyone getting hit in the balls is always funny. Inadvertently is always funny, yeah. Uh, Let's start with News from the Nation uh, with an update, Anthony, from your recent guest on the spinoff show, our buddy Andrew Gildy. Yeah. He's got a, um, was it Kickstarter? Kickstarter. Yeah. For Man Man of of Sin. Yes. The uh, trade paperback that launched um, Thursday of this week, so May 9th, and uh, he's looking to raise some money, and we, we helped him out last time. Um, we helped him fund his Kickstarter and uh, hoping we can rally the nation to uh, contribute to him again. He was on my spinoff show. Really good dude. He's been on Jock and Nerd a few times. He's been on our Patreon once. He's been on my spinoff show. Love the Overall guilty. good dude. Yeah. yeah, he's a really good dude. Um, he's looking to raise four grand yep. for the graphic novel. In 30 days. He's, in 30 days. On day one, he's already up to $706. So. 23 backers, not bad. Uh, yeah, he's still got 29 days. We're recording this May 9th, so he's got 29 days left. So this comes out Sunday, 26, 25 days. I will put a link to the Kickstarter in the show notes. Uh, Gildy, I think we're going to pledge because I kind of want a soft cover of this book because this artwork that he has, Madison, is is gorgeous. He's, he's been uh, posting variant covers uh, and and different pieces of art, and it's it reminds me a little of Dave McKeon. This uh, I don't, I remember he, I listened to the artist. He's never met. He like lives in Brazil yeah, or South America. South America, yeah. The guy, uh, what's his name? He's really good. Uh, uh, what's the artist's pa- name? The Camilo Pons. Camilo Pons, and uh, the stuff, the art he's been putting out. I have some posters from before that he sent us. I've always really enjoyed uh, the this art he has for this. So. Good luck. Support the independent we, we will creator. 100% send some money your way. Absolutely. Yeah. Listener, click the link. Check it out. Support the uh, independent creator. Ten bucks will get you some stuff, and it goes a long way. It helps them out. And Kickstarter is a great place to find independent comics, man. It's pretty much like your indie comic shopping uh, network is Kickstarter. You find a lot yeah. of cool shit. And if you want to know his story, just listen to my spinoff show. Uh, what was it? 11? Spinoff show episode 11. It's in the feed. Scroll yeah, it's back. His name. You'll find it. I'll put a link there. Uh, Jess Rivera posted uh, a t- the teaser trailer for HBO's Watchmen series because in two weeks, the sound you're going to hear is millions of people fucking canceling their HBO subscription. They're going to need I'm raising something. my hand right now. Yes, are you? Okay? Yeah. John Oliver on last week tonight is hilarious. He's always, he's like talking about it. He's like, in two weeks, this network is fucked. Uh, so, did you guys see this Watchmen teaser starring Nash Bridges and a bunch of Rorschachs? Uh, yes, I did. Walking TikTok, around. TikTok, TikTok. TikTok. Ruggs, what'd you think? Impressed? Did it hook you? No. No, me neither. Me, <laughs> you know what? Me neither. I'm like, okay, this. I'm not completely sold I was on like, this. Show me something that is going to make me go, holy fuck balls. Did. HBO is going to like nail this out of the park. So far, it's not. It just this. looks like every generic show, you know, that I've seen. Anthony, you get a chance to check this out. I did. I mean, I'm not the biggest Watchmen guy. Mm-hmm. The, the big appeal of this is it's Watchmen on HBO. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, I wasn't. I'm not a big Watchmen. Fan. It's later. You have uh, Jeremy Irons as an older Ozymandia. Regina King in, is in it. A lot of cops with yellow bandanas. I like Jeremy Irons as Osmi. Yeah, this. Jeremy Irons uh, looks great uh, in a lot of Rorschachs. Like, there's a people becoming Rorschachs. But uh did not really sell me. I don't know. HBO may be in trouble with trying to keep subscriptions after HBO. Well, they have this. That my One of my coworkers was really pushing hard that Chernobyl show they oh, have. Oh, I want to watch that. I heard it was good. Yeah. I've watched a couple of Chernobyl documentaries, and uh, it's a fascinating story well, of human error in a, a fucking horrible scale. Yes, that's fascinating just because it's, it's it part real. of our reality. Yes, yes, right. yeah. yes. Uh, and also, the, did you ever catch the uh, the Adnan? Is that on oh, HBO too? Yeah, you know what? Uh, I couldn't get through that. It was a little dry. Dry? Okay. Yeah, the case against Adnan Syed, I think it was like six episodes, and it was a lot of what we saw, and it was all right. It wasn't that okay. great. Fair. I did not. I'm not going to watch it. That Elizabeth Holmes documentary, though, about uh, that one's really good. And uh, they're going to have a Deadwood movie, which I'm kind of excited for. I love the Deadwood. What what HBO is currently doing is they're going, hey, uh, I know we're, we're doing we're ending Game of Thrones, yeah. but we, all we hired stuff. some people to do the prequels. Let's let's fast track some of that so, stuff. Uh, George R. R. Martin says three spinoff shows are moving forward. One of them got Ooh, canceled. Three? Yes. One, okay. There was one that uh, the writer is uh, walked away. It's not happening. But they're working on three. 
they should have already yes, had yes. it in the bag yes. and out after the episode of Game of Thrones. Absolutely. Yeah. The smartest thing they could do is the after the last episode, you show you the fucking trailer back. of the next one that's called 5,000 Years or whatever. Uh, uh, I mean, there's a lot of great stories to tell that yeah. we've only been told through just doing research that they could tell. It's just... But I think they used to do that. Like, they used to, like, build other shows together, and then when the other one would go away, the other one would take over. I think they did that with True Blood. Mm. Yeah. Didn't they have The Sopranos and True, Bro- True Blood after? Back to back, yeah, back to back or right afterwards. Or they had um, the other show where they had the, the where they ran the, the funeral home. Oh, yeah, Six Feet Under was a great show. I love that show. And they show. had Deadwood. Yeah. They would all bicky back after yes. each other, you, you right? Gotta roll. And they don't, they're not doing that well, now. They have, like, Barry on after. They're going to, yeah. They, I mean, they have a huge, such a strong lead-in with Game of Thrones. 17 million people watching all the time. Have a good lead-in. I don't know if this Watchmen is going to be <laughs> enough to keep people from what that trailer shows. Anyways, The mm. Long Night is the one HBO has ordered a pilot for set thousands of years before the events of Game of Thrones with Naomi Watts. And uh, Vladimir Fordick played a lot Vladimir of characters. Vladimir Fordick. You know, he played a lot. He played a lot of characters on this show. Multiple characters. He's done multiple stunts. He, you remember the scene in the Children of the Forest that made the first White Walker? Yeah, that's, that's him, him also. Yeah. yeah. And he looks like the guy. Yeah, it looks like him. And he's done other, uh, other roles on the show. So maybe we'll get to see him again. But I kind of think all that White Walker shit is done for reals. Right. There's only fucking two episodes left. So, I don't know. We'll see if we can hang on to this HBO subscription, but I doubt it. I think a lot of people are going to jump unless they give us something great. Uh, Wes Cranford writing in with a bunch of emails because he's catching up to the shows. He says, hey, guys, just listen to the Endgame review. Love it. Did you see the post of the nation where Howard the Duck is in the group? Yes, we saw that. He'd be awesome in a Ravager storyline. I was so pleased that Endgame gave me so many curveballs that I didn't see coming. Worried about Captain Marvel, though. The character is being written as meh. I like Brie Larson. Uh, at the end of the show, the jock says, please stop talking. I think you could make an awesome soundbite. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I said that to you, probably? Yes, yes. Please stop yeah. talking, Amber. Uh, that's a good soundbite. This is just random uh, train of thought from Wes. When, when, I don't mean to interrupt. Yeah. I was listening yeah. to the last episode. Yeah. and or one. It might have been the last one or the one before that where you're like, We've never seen the uh, the Night King walk through fire. I'm like, yeah, we have. You're like, where, what, when, when? what, how, <laughs> how, when? And I was like, I mean, I'm like, what do you mean, when, what, what? Uh, it's such a, a funny back and forth between us two. <laughs> I love it. We'll have to cut that one out too. Yeah. Please stop talking. Now we can have a spoiler thread for Game of Thrones. Some of us can't watch it right away, and now navigating the nation is like playing dodgeball. Looking forward to rewatching Serenity and your review. Lisa Morrison is awesome. Don't Who said that. Uh, oh, this is still West. West. Just <laughs> random fucking train of thought. He says, Lisa is awesome. Don't fuck it up, Steve. Good. <laughs> Why would he fuck it up? What's he doing wrong? Nothing. Lisa let, me, let me comment on that. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. So the etiquette with Game of Thrones and Endgame is completely like people like we talked about yeah. Endgame. Yeah. were like really like digital diligent about yes. not spoiling. Yes. It. Game of Thrones happens and the memes come up oh within God. a minute yes. of that yes. fucking show ending. You, like the Arya stuff was within a minute. Dude, during Twitter, everything's being spoiled. If you're on Twitter Every, yeah. all the a time, may, people, like, I don't know how. So quick. And there's, there's no etiquette with Game no, of Thrones. No. And the thing is, like Game of Thrones airs at like, like I think the West Coast gets a little delayed. Yeah, right? they get it an hour later. Yeah. yeah. So it's so spoiled. It's, yes. Which is why like the end game spoilers are one thing. But what I do every week for Game of Thrones, which is why you have to watch it as soon as you can. The minute the air starts airing, I will stay off my phone until yeah. I have watched the episode because you can't avoid the Game of Thrones spoilers. They're so quick. The memes are amazing, though. There's some really good fucking memes. It's just they come out like you if you're on the Internet, if you're on social media at all yeah, around yeah. eight, nine o'clock, yeah. you're yeah. done. Yeah, it's no. over. One even one yeah. glance like you can't even unless you right. watch it. So you can't look at it. Continuing. He goes, anyway, your show like Game of Thrones just keeps getting better. I oh. <laughs> is that, I don't know if that's true. Wow. I'm oh. curious who was the first 10 people stupid enough or I mean nice enough to give you money. I'm sure the first one was Seth. He needs therapy. <laughs> Love you guys. You don't know it but you guys were instrumental in getting me through the last 2 years of divorce bullshit. Wow. So thanks with immense affection, infection, the yank from down under uh, Wes, touching words. I have more, but guys, I looked it up. Our very first patron 
Anybody want to guess? I think I'm going to... Re- Jesse Looney? I'm going to... No, you're close, though. He's not with us still. He's not with us anymore. Uh, he's, I mean, he, he's in this world, hopefully. He's just oh, no, with- he's with us. Yes, he's alive. He's just not <laughs> supporting the Patreon. He isn't. Jesse Looney, he's still listening right in. Uh, Anthony, any guesses who is our very first patron? Phil Milan. Uh, no, but he no. was... Uh, you're also very close. I want to reward this person... This person was our first patron. They have been supporting the show for 37 months straight. Wow. And it is none other than David Belofsky oh, from a place sense. to hang your cape. Oh, shit. David, if you're listening, you want a T-shirt, get in touch. I want to send you a T-shirt for being our first and still supporting us. 37 fucking months. Unbelievable. Great. Thank you so much. Jesus. Right? That's crazy. He's an OG. He's an OG fan. Belofsky sure. goes back from, from the beginning, man. Day one. Uh, so... Wes sent us another email because I guess remember that episode we email so we getting from we, this guy? I, well he's catching up on the shows like he said he wasn't able to listen to the Game of Thrones stuff because he's whatever but remember we were talking about I think it was when you came back from uh, Coachella yep we were talking about music festivals he says okay so now I can listen to last week's episode and Blues Fest is the festival I went to five days and it's a camping festival but you can bring in your cars so car camping or you can rent tents etc no alcohol allowed in campgrounds but they don't check, nor do they do we police. So we all have it. On a side note, the sniffer dogs got me and took my joint. Ah. Oh, no. Oh. That sucks. Slap my wrist and move me along. In answer to your question, Imran, I'm 54, and I still do these things. It's in your head. Hurts a bit more, though. Awesome festival. Porta potties are clean and empty daily. Porta showers are good, too. Music is mostly blues, but it's a great festival. I've done 2018, 2019. Last year's lineup was better for me. But still great fun, especially for the copper who smoked my joint that night. The <laughs> fucker. Yank from down under. Thanks, Wes, for checking in. I love hearing uh, Wes's stories. He's still doing he's it. Still dude, kicking dude, in God door. bless you. Kicking he's older than me. Yes, he's, he's older than all of us and still doing he's it. He's more active than, than I am. That's amazing. With, 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 with his sports. Yes, and his he, like, he, he paddle boards. He's in the fucking kayak. He's going yeah. to. Fa- I don't know how you do it, Wes. How do you? Yeah, how do you do it? Is it Coke? Uh, <laughs> lots, lots of drugs, <laughs> probably. I don't know. Bumping it up. Well, Answer that, done. Wes. Yes, How do you well do it? Uh, and then finally, I have a uh, note from Chaco Tane, Tane Reese, who we have done his Patreon Waterworld review. Tane Reese writes in, Hi, digital dudes. It is I, Chaco Tane. Don't worry. I'm not here to talk about the you-know-what game. It rhymes with Olivia. Uh, instead... I'm here to comment on Endgame, but I thought I'd do it poetry style for shits and giggles. Oh, shit. Rugs, I think Tane would be honored if you read his iambic pentameter for everyone. (laughs) It's really long. Look, you got get the rhyme, get the rhythm I'm going to do it for Tane, though. Do it for Tane. I'm coming coming through for Tane. There we go. All right, you guys made it this far. Let's go on a journey on a poetry written by... Tane Rice. <laughs> Rice. Reese? Reese? Rice? I don't know. I don't know. Area? I, I, just like, I like area? that he just comes up with his own pronunciation. Area? Ariella Stark? That's uh, my listen. gag. The, the, what, am, what am I doing? All right. Here we go. 20 plus two movies there's been. From a cave escapade to the game with an end. Into our homes we've welcomed Marvel. Watched them triumphant and get th- put through hell. I can't read <laughs> A tip of my hat. Those dipped in the well, weaving and webbing to make it all gel. Emotions abundant, like when I touch my first breast. <laughs> Confusion, elated, and a fear fest. <laughs> At the end of it all, I must admit, watching Tony get cooked, cooked gave me a fit. And I wasn't a fan of where Steve chose to sit. Since when is it fine for Captain to quit? Instead, I think they should have switched in the script. Tony goes on to play the dad bit. And if he became the AI, it'd be a hit. Avengers Assemble, you hear Roger spit. As he snapped them all there with a glove on his mitt, it had been so exciting, you could hardly sit. Thanos be shitting on a big old... that Shitting a... (laughs) Thanos be shitting a big old peach pit. I tell you what the ending... The shit. (laughs) I tell you what, the ending's the shit. There we go. We got through it. Well done. You have to edit that. 
<laughs> I'll whatever. It's fine. You get it. Yeah, there's no way I could I, do it on the lovely first time. iambic pentameter cold poetry. Is it really? Reading. No, I don't know. Is that Doctor Seuss? It was some kind of Shakespeare thing. It was. I it was an iambic pentameter. What is iambic? It it's like, like it's not. I don't know. It, it's it's Shakespeare. It's Shakespeare. That's iambic pentameter. What about the ambiotic sac? Oh, you got to have fluid in that ambiotic sac. Yeah. Stick a little uh, straw in there. Drink it up. Amniotic <laughs> fluid? What are we talking about? Is this a medical show? What? Thanks, Tane, for it. Like, he wrote a fucking poem about Endgame review. I, uh, it's, it's very impressive. Did you like the poem? I liked the poem. I liked the effort. I liked it. It was different. What's your favorite part? <laughs> about the, the, my What's favorite part was about the breast. Yes, I like the breast part. I like Thanos be shitting a big old... It was old the breast peach. part. It was the breast part. Rugs, where can the listener find you online? And maybe you'll read their poems next time. Yes, I'm reading poems exclusively <laughs> on Twitter, at Really Rugboy on Twitter. So come and check that out. Absolutely. And I'll see you there. I just burnt this dude oh. really oh, bad. Shit. Whoa. And oh, shit. Oh, shit. Nice. I'll have to look that up. It's pretty epic. Uh, look, listener, check out the show notes for this episode, jockandnerd.com slash 273. There'll be links to everything we talk about, how to get in touch, how to subscribe. This week, there is a sale at our T Public shop. So visit jockandnerd.com slash shop. If you're looking for some T-shirts or a mug or a cell phone case, March 15th uh, through 20th, 30% off everything. Big sale. Subscribe for free wherever you listen to podcasts. We're on Pandora now. Oh, shit. It's very exciting. You can also follow us on Instagram at jockandnerd, on Twitter at jockandnerdcast. And, of course, as always, if you like the show, turn on your fellow geek friends and family. Show them how to subscribe. Show them that their phone has an app that you can listen to free content all the time. Shove it in their ear holes. We'd be much appreciated. Thanks for listening to the Jock and Nerd Podcast. My name is Imran. My name is Anthony. He's the Jock. He's a nerd. We'll peep you next time. We should really get a monkey for the show. <laughs> what? Will the monkey edit and put the job for me? No, just monkey like monkey noise. Oh, okay. Like you know, you can just cut to the monkey. You can hear him go. Uh, uh, the noise was good. I don't know monkey noise. This is an episode of Imran, get a monkey of, noise. Of friends, find the monkey sound. Marcel, Ross's monkey. Like funny, funny monkey sound.